All right, we're back once again. Except this time, it doesn't feel like we're at a funeral or an autopsy. <laughs> it feels like nope. we're at a. Uh, we're celebrating the success of someone. You know, we it's it not they're not perfect, but it's nice to just come back to this. Uh, now that we're doing the Xbox presentation, and at least you know I can't speak for you, but I'm feeling good about it. I'm I'm, I'm excited yeah. to talk about this. I don't have that sense of ugh, like I did with the the PlayStation showcase. Yeah, for this. that was that was actually like a it just like what we did with the last podcast. Like, just, well, I hope this one won't be a slog to go through. We talk about it because man, I was like almost half asleep. When we were fucking having to discuss that, like, ugh, it was terrible. Yeah, that that showcase, uh, man, oh man, I'm I'm just glad it wasn't that. This is this was Definitely. so. Obviously, we're here to talk about the Xbox Game Showcase that happened on Sunday. Time recording, we're a few days removed from it. A couple days to marinate on it, uh-huh. and we're talking about that. We'll talk about the Starfield Direct. Joined by Clelix, as always. Mm-hmm. And thank you for coming back to talk about it with me, man. Yeah, no problem. So, just, uh, we'll do the same structure like we did last time. But I think we did the same structure with the Xbox Game Showcase thing that we recorded last year, where we'll just go over, we'll do just a like couple minutes where we give our over overview thoughts of it, and then we'll go into the, the games, specifically. So, a uh, few minutes, no interruptions. Felix, what did you think of the Xbox Games Showcase plus Starfield Direct? I think that it was pretty great. If we're including, if we're including, I would say like this: if it, without the Starfield Direct, I think it was always oh, pretty good. But with the Starfield Direct, it was actually pretty great, and I cannot believe I'm saying it too because we know Bethesda's track record. And yeah, and then before anyone say like, oh well. Bethesda could have just highly edited it and did all that stuff. I understand, but at least presentation wise, they actually did a pretty good job with that. You know, certainly better than whatever the hell they're doing with Fallout 76 and all that stuff. Oh god. Uh yeah, I I agree. So I I actually think if I'm just talking about the showcase individually without the Starfield Direct, I really liked it. And I I think this was easily xbox strongest presentation in years i i think i i i don't even know if there was one better during the xbox one era that when they were still doing the e3 presentations that that was better than this there may be one but i would have to really go back and, and watch rewatch a lot of them to find out but they said all like i said all they need to do is just lightly kick that ball in to the net but they they walked up to that line and they kicked that motherfucker into the net with some vigor, man. They they put their weight into that Basically, kick. They in got there. they got you know how you get like five penalty shots. I feel they got like four or five of them in. <laughs> Basically, yeah. man. They they Xbox fans are fucking beasting right now, man. They they and, Xbox presented <laughs> a feast for the showcase, and then you got Starfield Direct coming in at the end, going and Mr. Howard coming in with his french mustache and saying would you like to see our dessert menu sir and in this and it, and it was starfield <laughs> it's it's delicious dessert with that starfield direct so and the cool thing too is that xbox proved to me that they understood unlike playstation they understand how seriously they need to take a showcase like this and this was kind of their okay you have one last chance before we really start getting worried here and they did exactly what I wanted them to do. They showed games that were coming very soon, next year, and then the future beyond that. And I know Phil Spencer said that they should... I think he said the number was around 11 first or second party 11 games. To, yeah, 11 to 14. I think that was the number range, I think he said. Well, I, and the thing is, I don't, th- I don't think he was counting Starfield in that list at the time of that when he said that during the presentation. Uh, uh-huh. And then I don't really count updates to stuff like Sea of Thieves and Elder Scrolls Online and Fallout 76. I don't really yeah, count those. Yeah, uh-huh, so, absolutely. So if we take a look at the grand total of 
the games that were shown off that are first and second party that don't include things like Sea of Thieves, ESO, Fallout 76, and then including Starfield in there, they showed a grand total of nine. Count them. That's so good. Nine yeah, so good. first and second party games. And, and that is excellent. Yeah, what did PlayStation show? Uh, they showed Fall off Razor. One, Razor. one single player game in Marvel Spider-Man 2 that we already knew about. One live service with footage, which is Hellblade. I almost said Hellblade 2. Helldivers uh, 2. Uh, uh, and then two live services with CG trailers, including one that was just a big old nothing burger of a title reveal. That was... Which, quite frankly, was just uh, disappointing. Man, whew, that's a <laughs> that was a stinky, stinky showcase. And then Phil Spencer, Matt Booty, all the executives there, Sarah Bond, Aaron Greenberg. They looked at that big turd that Sony laid and said, "I think we got this." And they indeed they they got this. And yeah. if we're if we're talking about purely as a presentation, isolated from the showcase, that Starfield Direct was one of the very best single game presentations I have ever seen. I, I even regardless of how Starfield turns out in the end, if we're just talking about script presentation. writing, editing, yeah, presentation. presentation, excellent, absolutely excellent for that presentation. And I was very happy with what they showed, and we'll we'll get into Starfield much later. But uh-huh. I I am for the very first time I am looking forward to that game. Yeah, it's like, uh, and I'm, I'm honestly shocked. And uh, again, honestly, as aside from, of course, the one major element, it's like, yeah, I'm kind of actually excited for ones. Yeah, it's nice uh, to feel excited for a, a Bethesda game again after uh, damn near eight, eight years since Fallout, Fallout Four, and even then, Fallout Four I didn't think was was great. But now that I, you know, don't have those that that honeymoon phase is over, but. I am looking forward to Starfield, and I was not yeah. this time last year. So that's and, and it's perfect timing. Good. Yeah, it's perfect timing too because um, I'm going to start getting the parts for my new PC. And I, yeah, to the PC people out there, do not be afraid. I'm pretty sure it'll still be quote unquote decently optimized. You'll be able to mm. play. I mean, certainly with my rig, I I will certainly be able to play starfield the new one i mean the the new rig i mean (laughs) Uh, we'll see uh i don't know (laughs) that's one of my concerns but we'll we'll get into that i'm gonna be i'm gonna be i'm i'm actually dread not for not for myself i'm dreading how you're gonna play it because i know what your graphics part is but i'm Hmm. scared of the other stuff like your ram cpu all that jazz but we'll we'll find out yeah we'll see we'll see yeah we'll see okay anyways yeah yeah so we'll start with the showcase itself and they started the the very first game that they showed off was fable which is the long in development reboot of the series coming from Playground Games, who are, of course, behind the Forza Horizon series, published by Xbox Game Studios, of course. No release date. I don't. I don't know where some people are getting the 2024 date from. I don't. I, I did not. That's a little. Yeah. I, I didn't, didn't see that, see that at all. I didn't see that either, and I don't think like I feel like it's going to take. I'm not going to name the game yet, but I feel it's going to take a. It'll be ready when it's ready approach yes. in terms of it. And, you know, and again, all power to a playground because like when me and Razor discussed that this reminder, reminder, they had to get uh, like basically another studio from playground, you know, playground went in playground to basically train themselves to work on an RPG game mm-hmm. to make fable. Yeah. Because reminder, most of these guys, they make car games. So that was my big concern, but at least I'm happy that they are trying they're trying. Yeah. Um this is a hard a, pivot for them. Especially, especially. This is this is the I would say again, this is the brothers grim of RPGs. And I've I love the first two games. I hated the third game. Um, but you know, I, I and I'll admit, I'll admit the major thing I have with this game personally is that I do wish there was more gameplay to be shown aside from the one sequence that we saw. Yes. And it feels generic, and I'm I'm gonna be straight up. It does. And now, now, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. It does have the quote, yeah, the fables that we see, like oh, like Jack, kind of the Jack and the Beanstalk. Mm-hmm. Oh, they do have the Balverines. I love Balverines. They're my favorite enemy to fight in the game. And you can kick the chickens if you want to. So definitely, it's gonna still have those good and evil choices. 
that you do so like that's not going to be concerned i and and again like teensy bit off topic but again people need to get off the fucking backs of the main character model it's like so they chose her big fucking whoop you yeah can really still customize her character yeah and, and reminder it's not reminder, a deal yes you, you only could choose male and female and then your character gets customized either through your your stat choices strength skill and will i feel this one what i think what playgrounds get to take it with a grain of salt is they're going to you can further customize what your character looks like you know hair body all that other stuff yeah. and then hopefully they'll still keep it to where you'll actually change even further um based on the strength skill and will kind of abilities which would be cool that'd be cool and then they said that this was an in-engine trailer which some some people are saying oh you know they did show gameplay and and i'm going ah that that's that could not be scripted. That game. Could be scripted. <laughs> that's that's a little disingenuous. They did not show raw gameplay, even even doctored up gameplay in that trailer. It they're showing scenarios with a gameplay like camera. That I think that is the idea of what they're going for. It's not that we actually saw gameplay with this trailer. Which after all this time, because this was revealed back in 2020. It, it would have been nice to see actual gameplay. The fact they didn't show that was a letdown. And especially for the show opener, I felt like maybe they should have picked something else to open the show, like Avowed or something. But I, I didn't really care for the trailer, honestly, at first. But I think it's okay upon a rewatch, especially now that I understand that it's, the, the trailer is retelling the story of Jack and the Beanstalk and they're they're kind of poking fun at this fable by having uh what's his name Richard uh Iode I, uh, I think that's the guy's name I but, think like the, well if you're talking about the giant's name I yeah. think his name is Dave or David well I mean the 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 actor I know that actor oh yeah that actor is good I like him yeah but yeah. Uh, what was it uh I can't remember yeah <laughs> but I like that they call him a vegetable enthusiast I thought that was funny yeah, and I feel like personally, and again, take a, take. I, we're not sure for now. I'm pretty sure that this is just going to be like a side quest, major side quest. I I might just be me. I'm pretty sure this is not going to be a major quest plotline where you're slaying giants or whatever. Sounds cool, but I feel like Fable it was really good at like dealing with multiple scenarios, but not making it the major deal. I the trailer I think it's okay but but again for the the game it's going to be on Xbox Series X and S so it will not be on Xbox 1 this is one of the the next gen games the current gen games that Xbox has in development it'll be on PC and of course it will be day 1 on Game Pass so that's good yes that's uh, very good very yeah, good I, yeah, everyone, I think yeah. everyone was kind of like, me and Razor called it out, but even my brother and everyone else were like, man, they got so many Game Pass games going day one. I'm like, yeah, yeah. that's like their shtick. Like, I think of almost every gonna... single game they showed off was coming to Game There, There are only a handful yep. that they showed off that aren't coming to Game Pass, at least not yet. So the next game, which this is one that that I think maybe this should have been the opening, maybe, or at least in the middle. It's called South of Midnight, and it's developed by Compulsion Games, who of course did Contrast and We Happy Few, published by Xbox Game Studios. No release date for this one, and once again, it will be an exclusive on X, a console exclusive on Xbox Series S and X, and coming to PC. Another day one Game Pass thing, obviously, because it's coming from Xbox themselves. Uh, I again no gameplay, which was disappointing, but um, I dug the art direction and tone of this trailer a lot. Yeah, and the idea concept of it. So we know for a fact that it's gonna be a third person action adventure game mm -hmm. where you're like basically in the south uh bayou, probably I think possibly Louisiana or somewhere around that state, and you I get assuming that you're some kind of monster hunter fighting southern monsters creatures of legends that kind of thing and yes. on its own that sounds like a really cool idea concept i'm not sure though if the we happy few devs ever made a third person action adventure game i'm not sure they if did they, if... contrast but it's that's not really an action adventure game yeah, that's more yeah. like a 
puzzle game plat it's been a long time since i've played it but from what i remember of contrast that was more of a puzzle game and it wasn't it wasn't uh-huh. very good from what i remember but no you're, you're right in that this is going to be an action adventure game where you do fight creatures of like southern mythology and you're i think you're this character who is a i think they're like a soul weaver i think that's what it was called where you fight monsters and i think your home is invaded by these monsters or there's some kind of blight on the world and then you become this magic user and the way they describe it it's this magical realist version of the american south which is really interesting I, i really like that idea it might just be it might just be like the old man or angry at like the last two games we get. I really, really hope we do not get a forespoken syndrome where this care this female character acts like, you know Oh, the just, MCU dialogue and everything. Yeah, I really hope not. I mean I didn't get that me, vibe it, from the trailer. Thankfully. I know, thankfully, yeah, thankfully. I, I didn't get it either. And personally, I I think the the developers like the We Happy Few devs there they make decent um, main characters. Like personally for me, I really like the main character for We Happy Few. I thought very interesting character and scenario that he was in. You know, but uh, yeah, this looks this looks interesting. Uh, and still, I gotta call out again the PlayStation fanboys because I, I, I'm not I'm not sh- sh- I shit you not. They said it was a ripoff because of like, oh, this is just like The Last of Us Part Two when Ellie was playing the guitar. I was like, what? are you fucking kidding me? Last of Us didn't what? invent people playing a guitar. guitar. It's a fun. Everyone can do it. It's oh like, god. how is that a ripoff? Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> but I, I think that the big thing with this trailer or this game is that that art style, which is it's stylized. It's got that stop motion perky jerkiness to it like nightmare for christmas or Coraline or james and the giant peach it just looks i i love yeah, this style it looks so first, unique yeah like at least for i think like um you were a little surprised when i said huh this kind of like reminds me of across the spider verse and i'm like yeah. i don't know it's just like it's just kind of the animation or like well i don't know if it's across spider you first use stop motion but you know that's just no me. It, it uses a. Uh, computer animation style that mimic, oh, yeah, mimics yeah. the look of or it, it mimics the mo- the motion of uh, a stop motion feature which yeah, it looks free, it looks inter- it's like what yeah. the new um teenage mutant ninja turtles is doing it's like what that new movie is doing with the, with the animation yeah style. Uh, yeah yeah so but, but i yeah, like that animation was great yeah, yeah and i don't often read the 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 official pr speak for these new games but i I actually want to read a quote from the the Xbox Wire article that they did about it, where the interviewer talked to the creative director. His name is David Sears. So this is what this is what Mr. Sears had to say. So the game is loosely inspired by me tramping around forgotten farms and abandoned places in Mississippi. I found artifacts Whoa. from the Civil War through the, the Depression and more modern weirdness like a tree with doll heads nailed all over it. Why was that there in the middle of nowhere? Someone went to a lot of trouble to cart all these doll heads out into the middle of the woods and then nail them to this tree. That's the kind of stuff that you can expect from our world in South of Midnight. It's based on the real world, but sometimes I think the real world is actually weirder than we like to think. Yeah, and I, I love that quote. I really love that quote. Yeah. And I, I th- one thing that I have heard before we move on to the next game is that some people, some of the big Xbox people who have spoken to the writers behind the scenes have said that the game will tackle some pretty heavy racial themes with it being set in the American South. So that's South of Midnight. I- I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic about this because... Compulsion isn't a name that fills me with confidence, and this was the one acquisition from Xbox that I kind of really raised my eyebrow at. Like I went, "Uh, really? You want these guys?" Like, "Okay, sure." 
Uh, I don't know, um, but but I like the look of it. I like the ambiance that it's going for. I love the setting. I love some of the things I've heard, both officially on on record and behind the scenes. So I'm I'm hopeful for this one. I think it it could be really good, really unique, and that's that's really what I want from these Same. exclusives to be unique. Uh, next game is. Star Wars Outlaws, yeah, which is you were coming. Like, man, yeah, you were like, you were like, what the fuck is that name? Like, you picked the most it's obvious. So boring. Name. So it's coming 2024 on PS5, Xbox Series X and S, PC, developed by Massive Entertainment and published man. by um. uh, Ubisoft. So, um, they didn't show anything at this the showcase that was gameplay, but I watched the gameplay reveal at the ubisoft thing that they did on monday and it looks fine looks it definitely looks like an open world star wars game made by ubisoft so i mean Mm -hmm. it looks fine Uh, i saw some people saying oh my god it looks mind-blowing my jaw was on the floor and i just said get higher standards (laughs) if you thought if you thought that looked mind-blowing get higher standards stop Honestly, I would rather take fucking Starfield than fucking Star Wars Outlaws. I, I, I think it's just me. I'm I'm so tired of Star Wars. I am sick to and, death And it of sucks. It. It, it, yeah, it pisses me off so much about that, too, because, like, I would want to get... Uh, I used to be hyped for a fucking Star Wars game, but the way that, you know, we got Disney and all these other companies that ran Ugh. into the fucking ground... There's no, there's no excitement. There's no hope for it no. anymore. It's, and it's so sucks. played out at this point. It's, it, I mean, I'm I was, so yeah, I was excited for the fucking KOTOR remake, but because like that's basically gone. Like people say, oh, there's still hope for it. No, you're, you're lying. You're lying to yourselves. It's fucking dead. I they think ran it, it to the ground. I think it will come out, but I'm not, I'm not excited for it. Because yeah, I, I think prob- Saber Interactive are working on it now, and I just I go oh, okay, especially yeah. now that they're it's under Embracer Group, and I just go oh my god, Embracer Embracer mm. Group's quality control is all yeah. over the place. Yeah, and, and they just mentioned they're canceling <laughs> games and whatnot, so don't be yeah. surprised if that gets canceled. So I don't think it will, just because Sony has involvement with it. And, and it, not to, but... okay, and true, and not to mention that it is a Star Wars game and. It's too big, I think, to get canceled. Yeah. At well, the I mean, look at thirteen, thirteen, which that's true. That's true. Next game is from that was played by uh, Mr. Phil Spencer, gamer. Uh, Thirty three Immortals, which is coming twenty twenty four PS five Xbox Series X and S PC, will be a day one Game Pass thing, and it's being developed and published by Thunder Lotus Games, who are the team behind Spirit Fair. Which I tried, didn't care for it, but this game, I don't have much to say about it. It's not something I'm going to play, but the concept of a 33-player co-op rating game is cool. I just hope the matchmaking works out well for the game and the final product. Yeah. That's ultimately what I have to say about it. Uh, and I hope, like, also, too, I hope the balancing is good, and yes, I know it'd be impossible, but... I'm pretty sure that there will be people who want to play solo, and if they don't want to play with people, well, then you're fucked, you know, because then that's uh, definitely going to be a skip on your end. Yeah, that that balancing, I, I don't know. It, it can't just be a simple adjustment to, to damage and health. It has, there has to be more to it, because the screen is just overwhelmed with enemies at some points in that footage. And I just thought I just looked at it and thought, oh my god, how how can I do this as a as a single player? I I can't. I wouldn't be able to handle this. It would give me a migraine having to figure out how to fight these enemies. So I I hope it works out for Thunderlows. I'm sure it'll get some attention with the whole Game Pass thing. But speaking of a game that's getting a lot of attention, Payday 3, which is coming out September 21st of this year, PS5, Xbox Series X and S, PC. Day one Game Pass, yeah. developed by Overkill Studios and Starbreeze Studios, published by Prime Matter. I have nothing to say about this. I'm gonna let you have the floor with this one. Man. Uh, yeah, I mean it's basically Payday more modernized, and um, 
I got excited for it. My brother got excited for it. I feel that if you're new to Payday, this will definitely probably be your cup of tea. They added a bit more action-oriented elements into it, so mm -hmm. it looks pretty fun. And again, like, it's perfect timing, too. Only got to wait a few months, and you get a day one on Game Pass. Yeah. Just hope that... um. I, I pray to it that it'll actually garner an audience, even though there'll be some September like hard hitters out there, like Starfield. Yeah, you know, coming out. But you know, again, all power to them because people have been waiting a while for this game. Yeah. You know, and again, kudos to people that got Game Pass. And I was like, I said, look, this is gonna be a Game Pass Day One game, and I'm glad that I was right. So you know, yeah, it, that's a that was a really smart get for Xbox. To get this on day one on Game Pass, just because it's, it's yeah. going to encourage a lot of people to team up and play together. And this was a really smart decision to get them on board with Game Pass. Really smart idea. Next game is Persona 3 Reload. This is the long, 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 long rumored and leaked um, remake of Persona 3, which is coming out early 2024 on PS5. PS4, series, Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, PC. Day one on Game Pass and developed yeah. by P Studio, published by Atlas, of course. Uh, again, this is another one that's a really smart get to put on Game Pass day one. This will be big. Uh, I, I have mixed, as far as the game goes, I have mixed feelings about this one. Uh, I There's, no, there's going to be none of the content from FES or Portable, including a female protagonist and all the social links that come with that. There's going to be an all-new voice cast. They're including new scenes. It's just... And I wonder how much influence they're going to take from Persona 5. Because I've never played any of these Persona games outside of Persona 5 and it's some of its spinoffs. And... <sighs> I've heard Persona 3 and 4, they have more procedurally generated, less handcrafted dungeons than 5 does. And that was one of the things I really loved about 5, which is how deliberate the design of the palaces felt. And from what I saw in the footage, it doesn't really look like the palaces have been revamped to be more handcrafted compared to 5. So I'm I'm a little iffy about that. I'm a little iffy about a new voice cast, even though I, I I hope they don't go really far with the localization, with doing changes that are smoothing out some of the rough edges that are in the original game, the dark element. Because this persona, if people have come to the the franchise like I did through Persona Five, Persona Five is one of the more hopeful, positive games in the series. And then you have Persona 3, which is really dark and really weird and has a really dark ending in most cases. So it's I hope they don't change it as far as the tone and the vibe they're going for. That's that's my main concern. Yeah, with that. The, the one thing that's like, yeah, and two, and my brother keeps asking me about like, so, oh, what should I what should I do? Like a few questions like, oh, do I have to play Persona one to go for the whole story? No. Like, no, they're all there. It's basically their own in universe kind of story dealio. Mm -hmm. And not a person for me though, I would say I told them if you can, you um I know like this one comes in, but I said that free should be like, I guess your first if you really, really want to get a persona and you don't want to play four or five yet. Yeah, then you can play four, then you can play five, and then you can play um strikers. You know, mm -hmm. like those are pretty good. Oh, yeah, because I think four is on Game Pass too, and that got yes. remade. Yes, yeah, so that's like great. So, yeah, so well, it's, it's the it's not a remake, it's the it's uh it's a port of the PC version of um persona 4 golden edition yeah i think that not the not the uh the fighting game i think no 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 that's uh, uh arena max i think that's what it's called yeah yeah uh-huh but no it's it's but I'm, I'm happy for persona fans i i am a persona fan just through five but i i really need to get on playing these games i i've never played three and four four has just been sitting there in my in my steam library for God knows how long now. I really need to get into it, but I just, I don't know. I just, 
I'm intimidated to play it just because I know I know how much of my life I sacrificed to Persona 5. But it, I, I hope Reload is good. I hope people that love Persona 3 really enjoy it. Um, the, the, the main issue, again, that I, I have with this being a remake is that the original is not readily available to for people to play. It's only portable that's readily available to play. So if this remake ends up sucking or they do some off-putting changes, there's no real easy way to play the original without having to buy a, yeah. a PS2 and then buying God knows, spending God knows how much on a copy of Persona 3 FES or, or original. Next game, which this is this is one of my big hype, my excitement moments for the show was Avowed, which of course yeah. is developed by the one and only Obsidian, published by Xbox Game Studios. This is one of the the smartest acquisitions I thought Xbox made getting Obsidian on board. Especially especially because like Xbox is kind of known for like I feel like there's a bit a bit right. I feel like they're a bit more superior in their RPG games than PlayStation is. Oh no and doubt. A, it's not even close. This was a great there's a great fucking move to get Obsidian. Yeah. Um excluding the and I'm I don't care I'm saying the fucking idiots that hated this. Because they're like, oh, it's not our, it's not our avowed. Because you saw one fucking trailer that, by the way, I knew that shit was not going to be like what they were going to do tone wise. It was just like a, uh, a placeholder, yeah, a placeholder trailer to get like what, um, you know, was in for avowed. And I warned people that they might change it, you know, because they they remember they went through a few reboots with this. So that's what they they did um, regarding this game, and but I don't understand um, what they showed in that original trailer that gave people the idea that this was. I, they be expected some, like, like something. What did they, you expect? They... That that trailer told us nothing other than it's set in the medieval, the fantasy world of Pillars of Eternity. It's going to be a first person game, a la Elder Scrolls, and it has magic. That what what else did people expect from I that think original people trailer? Expected, people expected the tone to be different. I think how and I it's was the like, same tone in in this trailer. It's, it's not tone, like they're cracking it's Marvel a... one liners or anything in this trailer. Uh, it's, yeah. it's they taking this no, shit yeah, seriously. Yeah. There's like a line in the trailer, this new one, where he literally is like, "You have this power now," and, and that that scare scares me. yeah, that scares yeah. me. And it's Especially, not like I think it's like not some people... shit like Forspoken where they're going woo. Ooh, a dragon yeah. that motherfucking Pe- dragon did i just move shit with my mind what the fuck did people expect when they looked at that original trailer from four think, years ago they, they oh my god yeah. this is what about is gonna be what yeah. did you expect i really want to know it's, it's less colorful <laughs> it looks fine why does it look ugly it doesn't look ugly at all it looks I colorful before, and stylized yeah, and i said before i said before and i was right i don't give a fuck <laughs> if people got mad at me for saying it i said look this is going to be like a Elder Scrolls style, like Elder Scrolls Four style game, and I mean by that, by it's going to have a bit of color to it. It'll still have some dark spots with it, but I, I'm glad I was right because personally, for me, out of the Elder Scrolls games, I think Oblivion's my second favorite. I'm um, next to Morrowind. Mm. Um, in terms of like, yeah, because I fucking love Cyrodiil. I love Cyrodiil so much. Oh, Cyrodiil and has I an feel, amazing ambiance. Yeah, I think the Living Lanes, this is the lane that you're in, is going to have a, Zero, a Cyrodiil vibe tone to it in terms of its colors. Um, heck, you can't even say like it's got a bit of Marwan because of the mushrooms in um, Avowed. Yeah. But yeah, I'm like... I was very confused by some of the negative response to it. I know. It's I... like, honestly, because the, and to me, this is because these are mainly CRPG people and not action rpg so and to me per look i've seen it all i've seen all the different types of rpgs for me personally right now this looks fine it looks you fun. know did you see that yeah. fucking magic system how he's like throwing people into the air and shit yeah. how it looks fucking, it looks so you, good and you can use guns in the game too yeah. that yeah you, you can do pillars which honestly say what you will I feel that's already a step up from like what Elder Scrolls is offering. Yeah, you can yeah. mod it, but still, if we're just going by original um unmodded stuff, yeah, this is already a step up. Yeah, the the magic and... in in Skyrim and Oblivion, it's it's functional, but it's unremarkable. Uh, but this looks to be uh, the n- big next step forward as far as creating magic in I, I feel these so... first-person RPG games. Yeah. 
And especially too, you can kick people if you decide to play a warrior build, yeah. which is kind of cool. Again, Elder Scrolls can't yeah. do that shit. But, and I um, hope uh, uh, my my main concern with Avowed is I hope it isn't as limited with the morality as Outer Worlds was, because they've made comparisons to it as far as the size with Outer Worlds, which, which I don't think is a another, problem. Another thing that that that's like that ticks me off is that people already were ticked off over the size scale and scope of the game and i'm like so fucking what yeah if it's not like open world not every game like, needs to be the size of elden Ring. okay if all if obsidian did promise it then okay uh, uh, maybe a teensy bit ticked but at the end of it who cares uh, the one concern and i take it from razor at least like different from outer worlds the one concern i have with it with outer worlds and um what is it is that um it's going to be in terms of uh, at least like the world and how it's built, there's going to be too many boring, non-interactive areas. And that was one of Outer World's biggest weaknesses is because you just, you go in, you shoot somebody, and then that's it. There wasn't enough like focus and attention to what you could do in the RPG scale of things. Heck, even New Vegas, yeah, there's some stuff with it, but at least you could like interact and have fun little areas that there was like again decent scale and scope to have fun and play. New Vegas know? is a rabbit hole that just goes really deep with what you could do as far as non. And reminder that they combat. had limited, yeah, they had limited time to work on that game too, and yet they yeah. still put out so much good shit in that game. Yeah, no, the, um, the Obsidian, if they have <laughs> one st big strength among their games, even the ones that I am not like it, that I know are not for me is that their writing is excellent. And cause, cause Definitely. Fallout New Vegas has excellent dialogue. I think uh, outer worlds for the problems I have with it. I think the writing in that game is really good. Magic looks great. Enemies look great. Um, the world, yeah. World itself looks great. Like the living lanes is great. Um, what else was, but again, if I go into concerns, you only can play two races, um, probably oh, the that's human, right. yeah. human. And I think their backgrounds, hopefully, hopefully we can choose our background, like metal folk or ocean folk, all that other stuff. And, um, an elf, um, what else? A, a little, again, another huge concerning thing is that uh, as far as I've heard, you cannot choose a class. So it's like Skyrim where you have to, um, I, I, I cannot remember for the life of me how Skyrim's like, um, kind of thing works. Well, it's, it's, you choose a race in the beginning uh -huh. and then it's basically an open, there aren't really classes in Skyrim. It's more... You just choose the skills that you want to Basically, do. Yeah, exactly. And then just the more exactly. you do something that you like, the more you'll level it up. So you could yeah. you could create a lot of hybrid classes. But for people that like the strict role playing aspect of an RPG, that's not what Skyrim is. Like that 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 is not what they're going and, for. And yeah, exactly. And that's the one thing I think that concerns me and Razor with this game is that is is uh basically i'm going more to obsidian here is obsidian actually going to i guess loosen the knot in their rpg making to maybe appeal to people who like skyrim mm -hmm. you know maybe yeah. but it's like uh e even even then for now we st it's still to me a wait and see process um yeah. i at least again and more of a starfield thing at least presentation wise and how the how the game was presented the trailer very good especially the magic the magic looks fun i feel that people are gonna have fun as hell with how their magic is and if if you guys yeah. ever played the like um pillars of eternity one and two is that this is going to the magic even there was fucking fun to do and again i just hope that obsidian again doesn't drop the ball um again with outer worlds and again i i can't i hate to keep like um, dogging, kicking to the ground, outer worlds. But again, I guess like it was just like I was expecting too much of it to be like more of a hardcore RPG. And there's more of a loose RPG. Yeah. And and I really like I really like outer worlds, but I I don't yeah. I don't think it's quite the because uh, I I had it on my uh, my cream of the crop list for that year. If I could go back and change that, I would not have it on there. I think I think I was also writing high on it being 
a Fallout like experience. Oh yeah, from, it was not. From unfortunately, Obs- I feel yeah from Obsidian in the same year that Bethesda shot out feel, Fallout seventy six. Yeah, <laughs> I feel bad for Obsidian because I I imagine they're not those type of guys to really be try. At least in my opinion, they don't try to do that. But yeah, I feel too many people expected them to do that and. Well, the thing um, is, too, yes, is that... The tra- yeah, the trailer kind of did... The first time we saw the trailer for Outer Worlds, it was it's a great doing trailer. like that, yeah. Yeah. I, the thing with Avowed... Or sorry, the thing with Obsidian, too, is that they haven't had the budget that a, a company like Microsoft can provide That's the thing to too, realize I, their ambitions. Until now, thankfully. Uh, maybe. I, I, it may sound stupid, but that's the issue I have with Outer Worlds. I feel that they were bid on a deadline, and they were working mm-hmm. under private 2K. division. I'll, uh, yeah, yeah, 2K. Private, yeah, private division 2K. And personally, for me, I thought that was a, a terrible decision. Those two companies suck balls, and I'm glad they're away from them. I like so. I like private division, but I, I, I hate 2K, obviously. But as a, as a subsidiary of 2K... Private Division has done a decent job cultivating like a unique lineup of things. Um, I don't obviously I don't like that they're under 2K. 2K sucks balls, but I, if it meant that Outer Worlds got made, then so be it. I guess it's similar to you know how I feel. I I, I hate EA with a passion, but that EA Originals label without that we wouldn't be getting like It Takes Two or or a way oh, out. Oh yeah, or like oh that. true. True. Oh, yeah. But, that's, I, I, but that's great. about it's uh, before we move on, it's coming to Xbox Series X and S. It's console exclusive there. It's going to be on PC, day one Game Pass. And this is one of the Xbox games that I am looking forward to the most. Next game is the latest Sea of Thieves expansion, which is the Legend of Monkey Island, which is going to be coming out yeah. July 20th of this year, coming to Xbox Series S and X. Xbox One, PC, Game Pass, obviously, coming out for free, developed by Rare, published by Xbox Game Studios. This is a great addition to Sea of Thieves, and it makes total I'll sense. Say, yeah, I it makes, yeah, it is perfect. And not to mention, again, that um, I always said that Sea of Thieves was a wait-and-see game. Wait till it gets updated, all that stuff before you try it out. And man, was I so happy because they keep putting out banger update after banger update and you know unfortunately yeah. i still haven't played it uh I, I played it with my friend years ago in the beta it was fun for a time but kind of a little boring i said again just wait and see wait till they update it wait till they put out more content and again i'm happy that they listen especially that fucking pirates of the caribbean that, update oh yeah. i was just gonna oh say that God, that, uh, that was I, so good i played that with um my buddy's dog and maddox and we all three of us had a really fun time when we tried out the the pirates of the caribbean thing and I mentioned last year that I appreciate the the Pirates of the Caribbean thing because it's not just a tribute to the ride, or it's not just a tribute to the movies. It's a big tribute to the ride, which I have a ton of nostalgia for. I love oh, the ride. I love the ride. I love that ride so much. They they nailed the the ambiance of that, and it was just so cool to go through that. And I'm I'm I've never played any of the Monkey Island games, but I am I'm very happy for those who have and like sea of thieves because this this is just like chocolate and peanut butter mixed together yeah oh so good next game is microsoft flight simulator 2024 which is uh, obviously coming out 2024 Uh, it's gonna be on xbox series x and s console exclusive pc Mm -hmm. xbox game pass developed by asobo studio as always published by xbox game studios yeah um microsoft i want you say I was going to say, not much to say, but I'll give credit. No. Credit where credit is due. They put a lot of yes. content into this. And I'm and for the Flight Sim fans, they must be like gushing over how much oh, yeah. shit you can do now. And I'm happy for them. Yeah. I really am. Not the game for us. I certainly would. If I, if I was a fan of this, I would certainly like up my fucking rig to the fucking max to play this yeah. at max settings. Oh, I would but otherwise, this. yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like, otherwise, yeah, kudos to them. You know, I'm happy for you guys, yeah. you know? I, I know and, I and won't course, be playing uh, this. Sorry, you go, you go. <laughs> I know I won't be playing this just because F- Flight Simulator is not for me, but uh, it looked cool. It, it, it almost made me mm-hmm. wish I was into Microsoft Flight Simulator. Same, same. It makes me, like, want to try it out. 
but I, I know that if I try it, I just, unless they have some like simplified controls for a dumb dumb like me when it comes to flying, I, I don't think this is going to be for yeah, me. Yeah, especially I, my bro, my bro literally said that these were made for like, oh, if you're going to specific job in the flight thing, it's like, oh, you go here. They actually some sometimes not all the time they train you to do this. So I'm like, yeah. So this shit is going to be complicated. I'm not going to play this. Yeah. Plus, it, it takes a lot to download this game on your on your PC. It's like it's like almost like over 150 gigabytes or something like that. And I just yeah, and it think, makes sense. Yeah, makes I sense. just no, thank you. I'm I, I would I would certainly like it. I I would what is it? Get a two terabyte um SSD or hard drive mm -hmm. at least for this game. So yeah, uh, no offense, no thank you for me. Yeah. Next game is another one of the big 2024 Xbox. Yeah, games. Razor's big one. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Hellblade Two: Senua's Saga, and I I hate that they have the subtitle first and then the name. That always bothers me whenever they do that. So I it should just, be, I just yeah, call Hellblade it Hellblade 2 Senua Saga. Yeah, not Senua I hate Saga. that. It bothers me. It's like such a big pet peeve of mine. So this is coming out 2024. They finally announced a year. It's going to be Xbox Series X and S, uh, PC, Game Pass, developed by Ninja Theory, a studio I like very much, published by Xbox Game Studios. And I'll be honest, I, I, I'm looking forward to this game. I'm sure it'll be good. But this is one of the weaker first party moments for me because it's been this is another one because I they announced Hellblade 2 in 2019, <laughs> December 2019 is when they announced it. And yes, we still haven't <laughs> yeah, and we still haven't seen gameplay that looks believable to me. Whereas that they they, they said that they showed gameplay off at uh, one of the game awards, I think back in 2021 or 2022 and or sorry yeah 2021 and that i'm sorry I, ninja theory i like you i did not believe that gameplay for a moment Boy, that yeah. looked way too yeah. smooth way too scripted it did not look like the hellblade i know and again this is one of the ones where if they really wanted to show up here they should have brought gameplay i did not want to see a, i like hellblade i'm sure that will have fabulous cutscenes when i play it next year but I did not want to, for your first appearance in a long time, I did not want to see a cutscene that goes on for this it literally, long. Yeah, it was literally like the definition of a tech demo almost too. Yeah. Like, they were like, oh, here's our, here's our engine doing this yeah. cool shit. They were like jerking <laughs> their gherkin over the, the UE5 shit and they're like look how good our engine looks look how look it's at like, these yeah. graphics and it's well, like, yeah we well, don't get okay. us wrong i mean unreal engine 5 is cool but come on guys we want gameplay not not yeah. presentation in terms of graphics but i liked that they and i mean this is something i would hope they would do if they were going to yeah. show it off but i liked that they did the binaural audio where you could hear the voices coming from all different directions which oh, that's yeah, exactly totally. how it is in the in the first game yeah where... highly yeah highly recommend yeah. you always like uh, the first game and then later the second game please play this with headphones you will enjoy yes. it that, like that yeah and, and that's that is how the game sh i don't often advocate that this is the way you should play this game but this is the one where this is one of the rare ones where i i said if you're not going to play hellblade without if you're gonna play hellblade with without headphones don't bother just don't bother unless you have a really good even if you have a shitty pair of headphones as long as it has functional audio in it play it like that don't play it without headphones the whole point of that game one of the whole points is to experience what it's like get a taste of what it's like to be in the headspace of somebody that has psychosis and that i think i don't have psychosis uh so i can't i can't relate to whether or not it's accurate but as far as the simulation of it, it is extraordinarily effective in that first game. But I, I hope, just for the sake of this being a sequel, I hope they take great care to not have it turn into this hokey, bigger is better kind of thing. That's like that's one concern that I have with Help yeah. Uh Next game. This was yeah, uh. I'll, I'll say it. I'll say it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say, but like, yeah, this is another Razor thing that Razor was going ecstatic oh over. God. Yes. Like a dragon, infinite wealth. Yeah, baby. Which is uh, twenty already like one of my most highly anticipated games of twenty twenty four. And and the main man, oh, the man. main shtick, man, the main shtick of this like the plot line, man, perfect, 
perfect Yakuza kind of tone and feel about it. Mm -hmm. So our main protagonist, he might be in America. Yeah, well, he is. So. He, he's been confirmed to be in Hawaii. And okay, yeah. So, okay, that is... Because uh, I, I always... There always comes a concern, because there have been... There are going to, by the time Yakuza 8 comes out, or, or Like a Dragon 8 comes out next year, it'll probably be like three of these games that have been released within a little over a year. And I would normally get burned out on that kind of shit. But the way they, I, I got to give the developer Ryo Gagodoku a lot of credit is that they always, they keep finding ways to really make the series feel fresh. I know, and they, it's it's strange. They got that that they keep getting those tones and vibes. Like, you know, they keep like giving you the stuff, but it's still good. Yeah. It's almost like it's almost like being provided. Like, you, you think it's like, oh, oh, I'm eating the same stuff, but you realize, oh no, these are different dishes. And then you taste them, and you're like, man, they're really good. It's almost like getting a chef, and then like he or she keeps making like new stuff, but it's part of the same brand almost, but it's still good. Like it's I would crazy. Say, I to, to to further elaborate on your cooking analogy, this is like yeah. if the chef if you went to a restaurant where the chef kept making a type of samosa, where the, it's the Yakuza exactly. game, it's it's always the exactly. outer shell is the same thing where it's that pastry, but then you crack inside of it and it's a different meat altogether or a different kind of flavor. That's always what it like people that look on the outside looking in onto the series they might just see these games and they look at the surface and they're like what the, what's the difference but when you actually play it they do an amazing job of using a lot of yeah, yeah and this is a very derogatory word but they use they do do objectively they do a lot of asset flipping with especially a lot of the older yakuza games but they find ways to make the returning cities of like Kamarocho and all these other areas feel different each time you go back and the fact that they're now going to take <laughs> ichiban to america i think that's that's a really great idea because that that just that just like leaves so much room for possibilities as far as the wacky interactions that he can have on american shores that's great and i, I as far as this trailer goes this is easily one of my favorite things here I love this trailer so much. I don't give two fucks that we didn't see any gameplay. I know what the gameplay of this is going to be like, so that's fine. I can't wait for this game. 2024 can't get here soon enough so I can play. The only thing I don't... I don't really like Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. I'm not really crazy about that subtitle. I wish they had just called it Like a Dragon 8 or, or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, I wish they had called um, Like a Dragon 8. Seven. I wish they had just called it Yakuza Seven or like a Dragon Seven in, in America. Yeah, because it's kind of like uh, getting. Because uh, my bro thought this is like what? So this is like what? Like a Dragon Two or something? I'm like, yeah, it's kind of confusing now. What? What the titles are? I mean, sometimes too, you don't even need to play some of these games in order. You can still enjoy them. But yeah, if you kind of are, you're gonna be kind of confused about oh, what to play first and all this other stuff. Very extensive lore with with these characters. Very extensive. But yeah. the cool thing about like a Dragon Seven is that it, it's almost like a reset for the series, even though it's called Seven, because it's an all new combat system with the turn-based rpg all new cast on characters and yeah some characters from the old games do appear in seven spoilers a little bit but in eight and then i guess it's not it's not really a spoiler because that was the it's in the very first trailer for infinite wealth where you do see ichibot and, and kiru teaming up again which they they kind of do in seven but it's much more pronounced and marketed in eight so is it, it it does kind of annoy me that they ended yakuza 6 with like oh this is the end of, of kazuma's story and now it's he's back and they they do the, the the pet peeve thing that i normally hate but i like I, I mean it's fucking cute you're like like come on it's it's cute kazuma like like really are we really going to complain that that this badass legend is back in the series and we're also yeah, getting no one, no gaiden later this it. year with him in it where he's fucking flipping people around like he's spider-man or some shit mm -hmm. i'm not gonna fucking complain about that that looks awesome 
So I, I'm I'm excited as all hell for Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. I cannot wait to play it. Yeah. Uh, next game. I don't uh, we care. Can, we can. <laughs> it's like, yeah, fall, do you know what? It's like, I'll say this. And well, you know why I'm mad about this game particularly, yeah, right? Yeah, I, I know. Because I'll say in a nutshell. So Fallout 76, New Jersey. Mm-hmm. They couldn't even get Fallout New Vegas. They couldn't just put it in fucking New Vegas. But no, we got to use fucking New Jersey. Go and Jersey. Atlantic City. And Atlantic City. And, it, you know, it just especially just pisses me off because they know that they're trying to make our city shit. No. No, Atlantic City's awesome. Fuck you. But anyways, um, yeah, yeah, my, we'll just get My that. only note for this game is don't care. <laughs> that's, don't care. Don't, don't care. Only reason, only reason people, not people, but like the reason Xbox has to give a shit about this, put this in is because Bethesda's like that little brother that's begging them to have like, someone's like, fine, fine, we'll put your, we'll put like your shit into this. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not the mention I got like three to four fucking Bethesda things in this showcase and that's like one of the negative only negative things we'll say about this showcase i feel and i you know i'll say it too much bethesda it's like yeah this guys. this was easily one of the weakest like this this middle portion i guess in this show like middle towards the finale was less compared to what we got before that's why i don't that's why i don't think this conference was uh amazing or the mo- the most amazing thing i've ever seen or insane or anything like that i just thought it was very good only because this portion now that we're in was like oh okay uh next game which is a new ip from capcom and i hope to god i say this right it's a uh, kunitsu gami path of yep, the goddess you got it. You got it. Yeah, and it's unknown release date. Going to be coming to PS5, Xbox Series X and S, PC, Game Pass. Developed and published by Capcom. So it seems that the pattern with Capcom nowadays is that the big single-player stuff, that goes to PlayStation. However, the new multiplayer IP stuff that seems to be going to Xbox where they can take uh-huh. it to game pass and get a bigger audience for it, which is smart. You know, it's playing both sides of the aisle, but you do what you got to do. I don't see PlayStation getting the exclusive rights, the marketing rights to this. I don't see them getting the day one PlayStation extra thing for this. So fuck it. Why not take it to Xbox? I, I, it might work for that exo primal game they have coming out, but I, I don't know, but <laughs> yeah, th- this game looks, it looks interesting. Yeah, it it's just still it still boggles my mind. I don't know what what gods they pray to, or whatever. But man, it feels like they can build or make whatever they fucking want with the RE engine. Oh, it's, absolutely. It, especially they they I think they remade the Ghost Detective game. That game is running on RE engine. Is like, that really? How? Yeah, I was like, how? How oh, the shit. fuck did you guys run? run it i mean not saying you couldn't but like how did you develop it to use it with that engine that's incredible yeah like it's like it's almost like um honestly i would i would dare say re engine is like up there with fucking um you it's know, one of the Unreal best engine. engines ever made absolutely yeah it, uh, well yeah like if if unreal engine 5 is the engine that everyone is using re engine is the engine that capcom's like yeah no we built this game yeah re engine you build this game yeah re engine yeah they literally it's like it's the smartest engine like next to the planet because again they don't need to build anything it's almost like um i'd almost even call it the gmod or sandbox of engines because again they can build practically any genre of game they want into this engine and it's incredible yeah and apparently it's a it's like some kind of action strategy kind of thing and i don't i Uh, I can't really tell if it's i can't really tell if this was multiplayer or if it's just you have companions like ai companions or something like if i look on the the website for this game it doesn't it just says play one player which I'm thinking, okay, maybe this is like Dragon's Dogma, where they have the 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 pawn system or some kind of. Yeah, I still need to see the, the gameplay for. Dra- yeah, I still need to see the the uh, more stuff for Dragon's Dogma too, because apparently I heard it's really good. I I'm sure it'll be good. I just 
Yeah. As far as this, I'm I'm not really sure what yeah. to. It's not a yeah. I would say the... it's not a bad game. It's just we're not no. sure what the, the tone of it and all that other stuff is yeah. about. I need to see more I, uh, of this one to really get I really like wrap my head around it. Yeah, at least on a visual like scale and all the other stuff. This is like one of to me personally, Path of the Goddess was one of the most beautiful looking capcom absolutely yeah uh, new new games coming out that i really like and enjoy yeah very very striking uh next game is forza motorsport which is coming out they finally gave it a release date october 10th of this year i'm gonna xbox series x and s pc game pass developed by turn 10 published by xbox game studios I'm glad they kept this short because I am like, okay, it's, it's Forza. I kind of just like shrugged my shoulders and mm. I was like, okay, that's that's that. An- another pass. It's once again Bethesda trying to like get their begging my um Xbox to show off more of their uh, shit no one cares about, God. and it's Elder Scrolls Online Necrom Shadow over Morrowind. I'll say yeah. I'll just say it like super quick. Like, oh, if you guys enjoy Elder Scrolls Online, I mean, I'm happy that you guys are getting so much Elder Scrolls Online content. Kudos for you. But unfortunately for me and Razor, we don't give a shit about it. Yeah, so, similar to oh, Fallout 76, the only note for this is I don't care. Yeah. And then And speaking of don't uh, care again, eh, Overwatch 2. Eh. Which I cannot believe I cannot believe, and I'm saying it for Razor, I cannot believe one of your friends actually predicted it, and I said, no, please, no. no. And it came to fucking fruition. I hate, I, fu- I hate Blizzard. Yeah, let, Blizzard. let's charge $10, $15 for story mission packs, even though we, we were supposed to have a free-to-play PvE mode. Because eh, cause we want that money. Suck my dick, yeah. Blizzard. <laughs> suck, suck my fucking dick, Blizzard. I could, I ha- would have a better chance, ch- you know, I'd have more fun playing on goddamn um, the Team Fortress 2 Man vs. Machine mode, which is free, by the way. You don't have to pay it for the content if you don't fucking want it to that has free modded content in there, too. So many fucking maps you can play it on. Fuck you, Blizzard. I had sh- absurded you. I'd have more shit. fun. I'd have more fun play with my balls than Overwatch 2. <laughs> Fuck Overwatch 2. Fuck Blizzard. Fuck all of them. Next game right. is Persona 5 Tactica, which is coming out November 17th of this year. Going to be on PS5, PS4, Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, PC, coming to Game Pass Day 1. Developed by P-Studio, published by Atlas. And I'll be honest, this one bums me out a little bit. Because everyone knows I love kind of Persona game. 5 yeah. to death. Yeah, <laughs> and I would love... I would love to play another game featuring these characters, but I know myself well enough to know that this is not going to be my kind of thing. Gameplay wise. I'm not into fire emblem. I'm not into this strategy kind of stuff. And I'm not really feeling this, this chibi art style that they're going with. I was a little bummed out when I saw the leak for this. Cause the trailer leaked like a whole, like few days before the presentation. Yeah. And I just kind of, uh, I wish they would just do Strikers 2 or, or something like that. I don't, I don't, I'm not really feeling this tactics game. I I, I guess I have no excuse because it's going to be on Game Pass Day 1, so I, I might give it a try, see if I like it, but I just, I don't know. I might just end up watching the cutscenes for this just so I can get the, the story without having to deal with the, the strategy gameplay that I know I'm not going to click with. Mm-hmm. So, anything you wanted to say about Persona 5, it's like, eh, yeah, oh, yeah, same, same vibes. Like, eh, not my cup of tea. Happy for people that are Persona fans that would want to enjoy, um, uh, you know, some style of game like this. Yeah. But otherwise, eh, no, not my, not my thing. Sorry. Yeah. Next game is called Jusant. Jusant. It's coming to PS5, Xbox Series X and S, PC. Day one on Game Pass. Developed and published by Don't Nod. Which, eh. And there is a demo available for this on Steam. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Oh, I, nice. I'll, I I'll did. try that out. I'll try that out later. I, I tried it. It was... It's okay. It, it's... It, it, was, I, was I right, though, that it's basically a rock climbing simulator? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. From what I played, it, it's... Here's the thing with me, is that unless it's something that really catches my attention, which this did not, 
I'm kind of over these games that focus on meditative activities. I think with with a few exceptions, I, there was one game. I, I think the 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 breaking point for me. There was one game I played earlier this year called Season: A Letter to the Future, and I couldn't even finish it. And it's the one where it's it's about the chick who is riding around on her bike in the the valley oh, yeah. and getting the kind yeah. of information about these people before an apocalypse hits it or something. And that idea is really interesting. But the game itself, I just, it just didn't really click with me beyond the what I played from the beginning. And I think yeah, it's like yeah, it's kind of boring to me yeah. personally. That's when it's I realized not- that I'm. <laughs> that's when I realized that I'm. I'm over these meditative games, and the fact too that that specifically with seasonal letter to the future, it's just it doesn't really do a good job of getting you emotionally invested in what's going on, at least beyond the the opening like i i really i need more from these these meditative games and than just look how calm this all is this art style is so pleasing it's it's, it's kind like, of like i'm like trying anymore. to think of yeah i'm trying to think of a good like a past meditative game that was good that was like oh you're progressing but oh there's actually a story in it and your character changes and the world changes and all this other stuff, but like uh, I don't know, I, ch- I can't think of one on the top of my head. Probably the best example I can think of is Journey. Oh, de- oh that's, yeah, definitely. That's definitely, the one that I. That that's my go-to for like if you want these like a, a quick meditative kind of game where it's it's a, it tells an actual story. It's very beautiful. It, it really does get you emotionally invested. In what's going on? That's the one. This is jer- Journey for me. Yeah, that's Dusant. It's uh has a demo on Steam if you want to try it out. Next game is Still Wakes the Deep, which is coming 2024 for PS5, Xbox Series X and S, PC. Another day one Game Pass thing developed by the Chinese Room, published by Secret Mode. And it's a horror game where you are on an oil rig and trying to escape from an unseen evil. Uh could be cool. But the Chinese room is hit or miss for me. So I know exactly. We'll they see. got their their biggest issue. I feel is that either is this if it's a hit, it, it's like a very um horrific, and I mean the good way, a horrific mess of emotions in your head, both like what you suffer, what the character suffers, and all that. Or if it's a miss, it's probably the most boring walking simulator you'll ever play. You know, that's, I know people, that's kind of like their famous Chinese room. Yeah, I know people really like. Some people really like Dear Esther. I, I just can't. can't I, I, can't I really like it. Yeah, I like it, but I, I totally understand why people don't like it as well. Because again, it's, it's literal. And I agree. It is a walking simulator where you yes. literally hear a guy talk to you. You go through some stuff, and then you might, if you're lucky, you might go into a room and find a piece of paper that'll. It give you some more lore stuff, but otherwise, yeah, no, that's all you fucking do. Next game is Dungeons of Hinterburg, which I I legit for a split second thought was Hi-Fi Rush with that art style, and then it was uh, it's coming twenty twenty four, PS five, Xbox Series X and S, PC coming to Game Pass day one, developed by Microbird Games, published by Curve Games. It looks fine. I, I don't have much to yeah. say about this one, honestly. Yeah, it's just like, eh, if you guys like your kind of, like, modern-esque dungeon crawler-type games, then I, I, I'm not sure exactly if it's a dungeon crawler. But, yeah. you know, hey, hey, go go have fun, you know? Yeah. Next one is Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty. This is the My one and only Keanu. expansion. And With he's Keanu. getting older. Yeah, I'm Come sorry. I'm sorry. I like the bus. I like the bus razor's chops about Keanu getting older. I don't like it. I don't like to see him with gray. It's so yeah. weird. I, uh, I'll say like yeah. this. Oh, sorry. You go. You go, Razor. Well, I'll, I was I'll saying this, this, this is coming out September 26. Uh, PS5, Xbox Series X and S, PC, developed and published by CD Projekt Red, of course. Um, I have very little to say about this, so I'm I'm gonna let you. Yeah, all I want to say is like two two major things to it is that I think that if you guys have lower NPCs and you got the money, you should upgrade because Phantom Liberty on PC is going to get a 
a somewhat massive um, PC technical overhaul. So the the specs will be different, like higher resolution, I'll say. Mm -hmm. And the second one is that um, to me with Phantom Liberty, it's not just going to be a DLC. It's going to be like a somewhat massive overhaul of the game. So hopefully... And at least from from the mouth of what CPR said, this was going to be their 1.0 release. So hopefully, and uh, for once, I'm going to give them like the benefit of the doubt that the, it actually reigns true, and I'll actually have fun. I just hope again that if I play this right and all that and start from the beginning, that it actually feels again more like an RPG and less of a boring slog action immersive sim that's what i called it when i was playing it yeah and for the record yeah. you don't you don't need to own phantom liberty to get the updates to the game the base game that's something yeah, that so kind of has yeah, been don't worry about yeah. that yeah that's something that kind of has been yeah. going around that people were under the assumption that you needed to buy phantom liberty to get the updates yeah cdpr is not dumb game. yeah cdpr is not that dumb they would never lock a, a massive content overhaul update like that just for them their dlc that would be dumb i would i would hope not <laughs> yeah um, like even they're not that dumb they're yeah. not even they're not dumb yeah the thing with me is in an alternate reality where i loved cyberpunk 2077 at launch and cdpr didn't lie to me for years on end and use up all the goodwill credit that i gave them from the witcher 3 i would be excited for this but as it currently stands, I'm just indifferent. And I, I am tempted to try it again along with this new expansion someday, but I don't know when that day will be, and I, I doubt it's going to be anytime soon. Just because I... After, Cyberpunk 2077 was such an egregious um, like abuse of my goodwill towards a company you, that I, I just, it just goes, I can't yeah, it just, anymore. Ugh, yeah. CPR. It just goes to show with like two that like, and I don't blame the developers because the developers said over and over again that their higher ups forced them to release this shit. So I know ill will to them, but I am mad at like no, the higher the, up at yeah. CPR over there specifically that they rushed this shit and they knew it wasn't ready, but yeah. they were like, Oh, we got to release this now. Otherwise people are going to get pissed. And I'm like, well, you shouldn't have revealed it eight fucking years ago. Well, yeah. yeah back in 2012, you should have like held it back until it was fucking ready. Yeah. It's, it's just, I, like you said, I don't blame the, the meat and potatoes developers. Uh -huh. It's, it's the managers at CDPR that I, I kind of shake my finger at. I'm like, no, 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 bad cdpr yeah bad that, they, they earned a it's impressive how much goodwill they earned from me through the witcher 3 and how quickly they pissed it all away with the no. cyberpunk i hope and honestly and and again i'll give credit if they're able to get our goodwill back or witcher 4 like you know oh yeah they're switching to engines because i heard they don't like red engine free they're done with red engine if they can get that done with unreal engine 5 and it's all good man I'd be so happy. It's like a quote unquote return from grace. But again, that's going to be a while. So let's not like, yeah, Witcher 4 is going to take a long while to develop personally. I'll say this though. I'm I'm not going to believe any of the, I'm not going to take them on their word with any of the footage that I see from it until yeah. I get it in my hand. Cause I, I learned yeah. my lesson with, with, I can't trust them. I'm sorry. I just, yeah, it's, I have no reason to trust them anymore. Yeah, it's basically, um, to me personally, it's like a, it's a Bethesda move. It's yeah, like, I can't exactly. trust them. I can't trust them, yeah. you know? Like, and that sucks. Like, yeah, like, guys, don't be a Bethesda. Don't, don't do that bullshit with us, please. Yeah. Okay, next one. Next one. Cities Skylines 2, which is coming it's out like, October 24th. Cool. Yeah, it looks cool. PS5, Xbox Series X and S, PC. Day one on Game Pass, developed by Colossal Order, published by Paradox Interactive. Not my thing, but similar to Payday. I understand that this is a very good get for Xbox Game Pass, because I know how popular Sea Skylines is, the, the first one. So I'm excited for the fans of this series, and that's really all I have to say about that. Do you have more? Do you have something you wanted to say about it? Uh, same thing. Just like, eh, it's like not my thing. Uh, yeah. Happy for people that are excited for City Skylines 2. Yep. Next game is 
metaphor re fantasio which is which, coming... uh, which like <laughs> huh? which is like i still have to it's almost like a i don't know i hate to say it atlas took a square enix type approach i'd be like yeah let's put the weirdest fucking name we can think of yeah it, it is a, <laughs> that's that's like that, that to me is like a kingdom hearts subtitle or i can imagine I know, like kingdom right? hearts re fantasio <laughs> i can totally picture that exactly. so this <laughs> is the next this is the next big ip from atlas uh, coming 2024 for PS5, Xbox Series S and X, PC, developed by Studio Zero, published by Atlas. A lot of Persona al- alumni on this game. Uh, for it being Atlas's next big IP, I don't, I don't have much to say about this honestly. I just, I, I kind of just looked at it and I was like, yeah, it looks fine. And then yeah. I just, it's like oh, okay, I'll, yeah. I, I maybe will and, play and again, it. And it's like yeah, to me, if if I was like, I'm not the huge huge um, Atlas fan, but I look at this, I'd be like, ah, that's cool. If I like it, I like it. If I don't, eh, it's fine. Yeah. You know, I just hope that like this doesn't come to bite them. That it's like kind of almost a meh reception because Atlas feel like no. you know, I'm, I'm sure it'll be. That. I'm sure at yeah. bare minimum it'll be good. I just I just yeah don't yeah. Know if it's I, I think be too. Me. I think so too. I think so too. I honestly would have been a lot more excited if they had shown Persona Six over over this, but I I yeah. understand. Oh man, that would break the fucking internet awesome. if they did Persona Six. But I understand that this is a big deal for Atlas and Studio Zero, which I I get. Uh, the next game is Towerborn, which is coming twenty twenty four. This is another Xbox exclusive from Xbox themselves. Going to be on yep. Game Pass day one. Day one. Yep. yep. Developed by Stoic Studio, who are the team behind the Banner Saga, published by Xbox Game Studios. Uh, I don't. This is another one. I don't. I don't really have a lot to say about it, just because. Yeah. It's. It's like I'll say. I'll say this. Like personally, is that it's. It's kind of a big like leap from what the Banner Saga yes. devs did, but this looks very fun. But and also a big but. We did see the extended showcase, and I am extremely fucking worried. When they talked about, if you can help me out there, when they talked about, like, I'm going to do the nasal voice again, they'd be like, yeah, we got um new lands, new content, new seasons. Yeah, the, the seasons, like, and then the fact that they said this is a living game. I was like, oh, it's like that's okay. well, well, yeah, I was going to say is that sounds very much almost like a live service yes. type, thing, type of thing, and that scares me, which sucks because, like, Honestly, I was like, uh, I was a kid, you know, when I played the Newground stuff, this gives me like a big kind of 3D Castle Crashers vibe. And I fucking love Castle Crashers. Oh, Castle Crashers so is awesome. It's, yeah, it's like, so it'd be cool if like, especially the whole you can combo and then your friends can jump in and then finish your combo for you. Really fucking cool idea. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, and again, I feel once again... At least, like, um, these guys are playing it. Stoic is playing it safe. Yes, let's put this game day one game pass. So at least, like, hey, at least we could try it and not kind of sort of feel we're not screwed over. I mean, yeah, there's stuff we've been screwed over, like <laughs> Redfall, like, oh, waste of my life clock right fucking there. <laughs> I would be uh, more interested in this if it was a one and done, like, linear co-op game in this art style i could i i could i could i could agree on that because eh, you know because um unless they blow us away with the future content like i don't know say sea of thieves if it was like a sea of thieves thing where it's new content blow us away then okay i would give it a shot but eh, i really don't expect it from stoic no offense yeah. to um and this it's it's impressive like how many xbox games are coming out in 2024 already where they they if there's this there's uh hellblade 2 there's a vow there's microsoft flight simulator 2024 i think they even mentioned that somewhere to, there's an interview where phil, phil spencer said that there's more games coming to xbox from them in 2024 than what was announced at the showcase so i'm like oh oh okay yeah. i didn't know that i didn't know that yeah i was like oh okay awesome um, and then the final game before we Which, get to oh. before we get to starfield yeah. This was yeah. this was oh, my yeah. out of everything we saw that had gameplay. This was my favorite thing outside of Starfield. And then no, I was like, I was ecstatic that I was ecstatic that you were ecstatic about this game because we're both kind of RPG fans. We love our RPGs, mm-hmm. and man, I was I did see a leak 
or at least ideas that are like, oh, so this is like, was it? This is Clockwork Revolution release date when it's ready. I'll say it's yeah. Xbox Series X and X console exclusive PC. Uh, yeah, I think it's day one Game Pass. I yes, believe it will be. And so it's a at least from so this is made by NXL Entertainment. Man, we I was waiting on this game, but the way they showed this was awesome and again i'm i'm uh, no offense to my friends they said that this game looked generic fuck them i'm sorry i'm sorry to say but ooh, this ooh, is cool. it looks like bioshock yeah. infinite who cares that's another ooh, thing too ooh, like come on come on man don't stop it with stop with the comparison not you of course to so the people who said that fuck the comparison bullshit when you do that you you already are automating like oh this game sucks like stop it it's an exile. They made some great fucking games back, like when they were working for um Interplay with Arcanum, the Fallout series. They Wasteland. I love two and three. Those are some good ass games. Mm -hmm. And I called this. Uh, if I kept talking about this game, I kept saying that this was like almost at least from what I've read and what I've talked about in my other YouTube video is that it's almost like the butterfly effect. But if it was a steampunk RPG, and honestly, the the way I say it, that should like really pique your interest, too. Yeah. Because like to me, it's like it's not just like, um, stopping the bad guy, but like oh, your time traveling can meddle negatively, even though. So it's almost like, is it a good idea to use these time travel powers to mess with, of course, the fabric of time to stop this greater evil? And really, that's like excites me, you know. At first, too, I thought this was actually going to be more of a linear, um, base game, but no, it sounds more like it's more of an open-ended, not open Ooh. world, not open world to yeah. make it clear, open-ended RPG. And um, Brian Fargo, oh, I love Brian Fargo. The way he talked about how this game is going to be, oh, it just makes me so excited. Is there a new because... Brian Fargo about Clock Revolution? Yes, he was. He was talking about it interesting yeah um, this this was a big surprise because i because in exile have never made a game like this before yeah they never made like a first person action rpg style game yeah like this before and i was very happy by the the style that it's going for the art direction the type of game that it's it's an action rpg where it's like clay mentioned it's the time traveling mechanic where you go into the past and you affect you try to prevent the current regime from abusing the citizens in the city but your actions can have consequences they can change the entire look of the city and i, I just i was like man this looks this looks so cool i yeah, and i'm to, really excited to, to get my hands on this one yeah next to about two like damn in exile and obsidian they were not skimping out on the fucking blood and gore so you're like god damn especially like too like i'm watching now the dude in the red coat you fucking throw this shit in and he gets sucked into oh, a yeah. goddamn giant yeah, yeah, yeah. like holy shit and then wow. man this this whole presentation if, if you're an rpg if you're a fan of single player rpgs and or fantasy yeah, I, that you're fucking, I you're, this this conference was for I you said. yeah man, oh, that's man. What, exactly what i said on my youtube thing like oh my god like and say what you will about the quality of them hey at least you're getting some rpgs like this is some good shit yeah man you this, know this looked fucking and, awesome i'm yeah, really excited like, for those and again i i it's like you know it's what is it i could see that some people are like oh it's bar shark infinite but like when you go more if you watch it a few times this thing definitely has its own identity in terms of what it is yeah. you know it's there's a lot really of people that are putting cool. up there's a lot of people that are putting up comparisons to bioshock infinite and I'm just like, I'm like, oh, come on, like, who cares? Just like, if the game is great, fun, who gives who, a shit? Yeah. yeah, who gives a shit? The game, if the game is great, who fucking cares? This is what I especially like. You know, I, I think, think the the, the ugh, it's like the grown comparison I did was like, um, sorry for spoiling it for people who haven't played Bosch like Infinite, but when Booker, Booker, and oh, jeez, I forgot Elizabeth. her name, Elizabeth. Like, uh, yeah, she can time travel, right? She can she she can go through uh, to different dimensions, and that kind oh, of yeah. stuff. Oh yeah, so so technically, so she t not exactly time travel, but yeah, she does mess with dimensions, and then it goes into one instant where where I guess the Vox Populi take over, and oh, they're the bad guys now. It's, it's yes. really bullshit writing. Ugh, I hate it. 
I, I, it's like I really hope Cat, wait, yeah, Kev, Kev, Kev Levine, Kim, Kim I think Levine. his name is. Kev Levine. I really, I really hope Judas is good and not that bullshit writing he does. Well, Jack, because the I, thing I is like the many ideas. In. I, I like yeah. I like the writing in Infinite for the most part. It's just them. Uh, the, the my Bioshock issue with Bi- DLC, yeah, the Bioshock DLC was really good. I'll give him credit for that one. That was really good. My issue with Bioshock Infinite is that I think it's it's a great story that doesn't necessarily need to have combat as heavily as it has to, but because it's a video game, they have to keep coming up with ways to make it a shooter and, and I'm like it's I'll a lot more credit. interesting as a story I'll give than credit a yeah I'll, i will give credit where credit is due out of all the bar shocks i love infinite's combat it is so fun to play especially the yeah. open a- open-ended areas huh, I, hell i wonder i wonder if like doom or doom eternal looked at that and be like mm, you know that's fun we should do something like that because especially when booker's um I always love that where the main protagonist doesn't just sit freaking still in one hallway and then shoots the guys. No, he's running around doing free sixty swirls around the enemies and they chase him around. Yeah. That's fun. Man, that, those, those skyhooks are awesome. The, the skyhooks. I'll some give credit. Game. Yeah, give credit. What what when they worked it? I know there was like a lot of ideas they couldn't put in when they worked with Bioshock Infinite with like when those ideas worked, they fucking worked. Yeah. Like wow, you know. Yeah. Um. But, but yeah, again, Clockwork Revolution coming in due time. We're excited for it. Probably my second most anticipated RPG that whenever it comes out, whenever it comes out, I, I, I say to NXL, of course, hey, they got Xbox. Hopefully with Obsidian, they're like, look, they, they'll give them the time and money to work on this. All power to them. I hope this game knocks out of the park next to fucking yeah. Avowed and maybe again yeah kind of what fable you know as generic as it looks you know hey all power to them yeah they're like obsidian we're in exile their their main office is near me so i've got to represent gotta represent the oh, yeah. Did you ever meet them? no i've never met i've never met i would love to meet them they sound like really nice people and then the finale which holy shit <laughs> it's uh Starfield, which is coming out September 6th, going to be on Xbox Series S and X as a console exclusive, PC, day one on Game Pass, developed and published by Bethesda. Um, there are a lot of there are a lot of ways that we could start this. I get so. Do you want to just get like the the negatives and the lingering concerns out of the way before we get? Because I'm mostly positive well, about that. I was about to say, yeah, we should do negatives and then do positives. So uh, the the big one, I think, obviously, is that it's going to be 30 frames on consoles. That's the and, big and thing. Also too, yeah, I think like because like uh, someone, I think what's the saying? It's a Gundam. I don't know if you know what's a Gundam. Yeah, I know it's a Gundam. Ed said that if you looked at his Twitter, is that the frame rate might be tied to the physics. I think that's what he said, which I'm like, I wouldn't be surprised because they've been doing that shit since Fallout 3. So I would not be surprised. Isn't there something with the cre- so, there I know there's something that the creation engine does to where it affects the frame rate. There was some know, kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, like especially in Fallout 76. If you've seen, especially on PC, if you've seen the crazy shit uh, that some people can do when they got like their big ass um PCs and all their like you know um four nineties or all that other shit. Yeah, they could break the game because of because yeah. their frame rate is so fucking high. Yeah, and the the thing too with the frame rate is I I I I don't like and they're doing this again where Phil Spencer and Todd Howard they're both like it's it's a creative decision to do a thirty frames per second. No, that's no stop. Stop, 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 stop. I, I, I do not want to go back to 30 frames on consoles. And I, I don't get, want yeah, that excuse I, to be like, it's only, a creative decision. Yeah, no, only, stop. The only thing I'll give credit, the only thing I'll give credit to them regarding that is that at least, like, they're being honest that it's 30 FPS, that they're locking it. Um, But, well, uh, you know, and then, like, with Arcane... They're also, like, yeah. They were also trying to sneak that past in the... um in the in the the direct where they never mention it directly ironically enough and then later on they have to go through IGN where they're like oh yeah by the way it's a uh, it's 30 frames okay yeah they always do that they're like they're always like um at least with some of these these game game people they're always like yeah we'll show the good stuff and then hopefully they'll still be in a good mood they'll get a little upset 
Yes. But they'll still be like good mood, yeah. whichever. Overwhelm granted, people with the good and then give them the bad news. And that that's yeah. that's kind of a very one on one business tactic. And, and sometimes and sometimes too, like at least like people with you and me, yeah, we don't eat up that bullshit like it's breakfast. Like we know no. that's that's still bad. Like, come on, man. Yeah, that, that's that's and I don't I don't believe Todd Howard when he says that the game will run at a lock thirty frames. That's a lie. That is that is a bald faced lie. Tell me I, sweet little lies. I yeah. do not believe that. That that's gonna be a locked thirty frames. Not no. No 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 no. Wait, so what do you think? It, like the is it gonna be? I think bad? it's gonna be all over the place. Oh. Oh, I think it's okay. gonna be okay. all that's, over that's the place because it, it's it's the creation engine. It's Bethesda. It's a lot of jank. It's they do the whole like overtly detailed kind of stuff in their game. It, it's this will absolutely run at like an inconsistent and, thirty frames. Yeah, and if we, I guess, like this no would doubt be in my also mind. Count, yeah. Also, I guess this would count as a negative. Once again, we still have no freaking clue how the PC port is going to be. I I no. dread I dread Razor playing this game. Me me I might at least be able to run at sixty plus FPS because I'm getting a new computer later um this week next week hopefully. But yeah, I am so concerned for Razor right now. How I his just, computer's gonna run this. As long game. as it can hit uh as long as it can hit like 1080p sixty, I think I'll be okay. I don't even give a that's shit. Not, if I that's have to what I'm hoping. Graphics, like medium. That's what I'm hoping. Yeah. But I just. I... I I know that the, the a big reason why they're doing this is because of the scope of this game, and this also feeds into my other thousand, concern of it. Thousand worlds, yeah, yeah thousand with the, with the whole procedural generation, explore a thousand worlds kind of thing. It's it's like I don't, I never asked for this. Like I never asked for this procedural generation. <laughs> yeah, I never asked for this. I never, I never wanted you to do like a no man's sky kind of thing. That's that's not what I play Bethesda games for. What I play Bethesda games for are the handcrafted worlds that they make, which I think they do a great job doing. That does not translate to explore a thousand planets that that pull in all these different randomizers of different things, and then you could see different items and events that you, that your friends and it's and then you encounter the same characters with the same recycled voice lines it's, it's like it's like ah, i and don't the one thing I don't and the one want thing that. that's like yeah and i and the one thing i think razor can agree with me on this the one of course the the part of the files of planets that worries about me is that like what is it basically imagine like the annoying bullshit of pressing garvey's settlement system but expand yes. it to the size of a fucking planet well expand it to the size of multiple galaxies basically that's, that's, yeah I'm like eh, i don't i don't know i i i was over preston garvey and all that all that stuff back in fallout 4 i don't i don't it need it like, now in Starfield. it's like as i yeah and it's always like worried about me because oh god and speaking of that's the one thing that's going to worry about me as well is right if we join a faction that they're going to act exactly like fucking garvey be like yeah um, playing this planet. <laughs> the settlement for us. needs your help on this, this planet. It's a settlement. It's a fucking planet. This and planet like, needs oh, your help. God. And then like, and then um, I I'm already. I, I hate to do again comparison to Fallout Four with this, but and oh yeah, God, do not get me started. If we have to go all the way to a fucking planet that they can't defend themselves, even though I gave them goddamn power armor, that they're gonna like have to be like, yeah, can you help us? Or oh, someone got kidnapped. Do this. I'm like, no, please. <laughs> We have a, we have an outpost that needs your help on planet. I know eight hundred and fifty seven. The war, yeah. Again, like I said, I'll try to like stop with the Fallout Four talk. But man, I am tired. I am tired of helping these people when I already gave them like almost max level armor and what max level guns, and they still have the the incapacity of a fucking five year old that they can't just like kill these guys and protect my fucking settlement and it, it's happened before i've i've i put it on youtube i streamed it and all that other stuff they, these guys are dumb as fucking five-year-olds bricks they can't do it because the other... Todd Howard is the point of stupid um radiant glass lines. And all oh, this. that's right. Yeah, um, yeah. The, the radiant system from Skyrim. Because they yeah, yeah. because they expect you because they want you to level up. You doing that that I'm like no. Give me ha um handcrafted generated quest. And thank God, thank God they got the Far Harbor guy 
to um, be the main lead quest designer. So hopefully he can try to at least minima uh, minimize those kind of bullshit quests. Yeah. You know, that's all I ask. I'm sorry to go to rant, but that's, that's what I'm, the big concerns. That's the, those are the big fucking concerns I have with this game. The, if the thing feeding back into Fallout 4, the thing that concerns me about this too is I hope, I hope the crafting and resource gathering system is something you can easily ignore because that's not I, you, I'm, I'm not interested in finding resources to build better guns I'm not interested in crafting all these different weapons and items I'm not interested in outpost building I'm not interested in ship building I I what I come to a Bethesda game for like I mentioned are the handcrafted quests and the characters and the dialogue and the the ability to make my own story out of this with the traits that I choose. And that that's the stuff going into the positive that looks to be really cool about and, and Starfield. Yeah, and also, and again, another, uh, and again, take it with a grain of salt from what the lead quest designer said. He has said, um, not exactly word for word, but he basically said, oh, you could do this or you can that, or oh, you don't have to do this. I'm like, please, yes, this is what we want. I don't want to do the outpost. I just want to be, do some role playing, just explore the galaxy with my yeah. ship. Maybe customize my weapons and ships. At least that's I'm fine with that. I'm fine with doing that myself. But hey, you know, maybe the stuff Razor did. Yeah, maybe he doesn't want to do that, but still have a fun experience. That's what we want with Starfield. I that's want to be able. Want. I want it to be able to, I comfortably play this game, as somebody who can talk their way out of any situation. Because that was one of my big sticking points with. I guess I guess like Skyrim and Oblivion to some extent, but much more so in Fallout 4 is that I always felt like I had to fight. That no matter what I did, it was always yeah, lead to think, fighting. Yeah, someone I saw this on the Twitter post and people got like pissed off about that as well because they're like what if I just want to talk and explore the galaxy? Yeah. What if I don't want to fight? You know, because I, I could be wrong. I think if you customize a bit No Man's Sky, you don't have to fight anybody. It could just be exploration. No. Or yeah. Or something. So, yeah, yeah. So it's like, hey, do it like that. That's what I want the experience to be. And yeah. I feel, unfortunately, Bethesda's way too, like, they're going to be like, nah, you, you got to fight some people. Yeah. Like, oh, if you, you stumble on some, yeah, it's automatic fight. And it's like, man... Like that kind of sucks. I understand I mean, me, that that like, I understand that most of the I understand that most of the quests are going to be designed around combat, but I would at least like an option to talk my way out of it if I've put enough skill points into yeah, it's like, like it's stealth or bribery or intimidation or that's, yeah, speech. Mm, that's that kind the of thing. Stuff. Uh huh. That's the thing. Once again, like um, uh, I think it, again if we go back to like I would say again, falling to Vegas. New Vegas had multiple like paths and all this other stuff yes. that you could do to settle a a discussion or fight without having to fight. Yeah, sometimes so you have to fight them. That's fine, whatever. But yeah. there was just enough. It's not enough as line. Fallout. It's not as much so as Fallout Four. There was just enough in the quest lines that you could basically. Oh, you want to sneak in? Yeah, sure. We built this path for you that you can sneak mm -hmm. in. Oh, you want to fight? Sure. You want to talk them out? Sure. Like there was just so many options you could do to the fuse situation, and that should be an RPG in fucking general. Yep. You should have more, more, <laughs> almost just like in real life. You should have multiple scenarios be handed to you that you can handle it. That maybe oh again your specific character will be like want to do this, want to do that again, and that's another thing we say that the RPGs in general mm -hmm. is that you should be limited, but that's okay. You could go to another character that you basically an alt character that could do this and that you made your money's worth that's the general win of an rpg because again if you do the skyrim route and you try to have your character do fucking everything in one playthrough what's the fucking point yeah the the thing too is that if anyone wants an idea of what i'd like from starfield there is a super cut uh, it's like a three hour super cut of all the different speech things you can do in new vegas and it's oh, it's mind yeah. blowing gotta... how deep the rabbit hole goes. And, same and, thing with being it... a, a dick. Same thing with being a pacifist. It's it's incredible what Obsidian were able to do with that game and in a year I'll and give, a half. I'm a little bit scared. I'm a little bit scared. But if this might be a positive, might be positive, might be a negative. But apparently, 
Bethesda has said that this is their most, I guess, talked about in lines of dialogue with this game. So who knows? Maybe they listened we'll and they're see. trying to they're trying to do like a new Vegas where you could be like maybe a pacifist or an aggressive dude or whichever. But one um, thing they I, I could be yeah. Oh, one, you go, you go. one thing they did that I'm I'm glad they made the change from Fallout Four is that the the main character is not voiced, so that's already Thank an improvement God, yeah. right there. Thank God. And they're bringing back a lot more of the like the wacky traits, where I I love the I think the thing that excited me the most outside of the the adoring fan, which which I love, the thing What's that excited saying? me the most of what I saw were these traits that you could pick out from. And they just had like which was definitely a fall in the Vegas face. Yeah, and they just had like weird little things like you could be a chef and people will people will remark that about you. You can have it where you have to pay a certain amount of credits to support your parents, but you can go home and see your parents, and I guess you can interact with them throughout the the game. And they have their own little yeah. quests you can do for them, which is a good bonus. I like that. I like I, that. I liked the one where he said that you could select a religion, and then you can get away. You can the certain mercenaries will allow you to pass through space which unharmed. Is cool. Yeah, which because is because cool, you're the same man. religion. It's like stuff like that. I think is really 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 inventive and which is still like yeah, it still man. boggles yeah. my mind though that no offense that fucking obsidian came up with this shit years ago but like I, again i'll give credit to bethesda that I, again at least quote unquote because again we're not even sure what the final product they're trying to be more of an rpg than actually just just in uh, to me it's just like an action game with immersive elements kind of thing you know yeah if if i look at the cuz i'm looking at the list of traits right now that they showed there's things like um you can be an empath you can be hero worshiped you can have the your, your <laughs> yeah. parents you can be uh uh you can do the serpent's embrace which is the religion there's different kind of raise stuff that you have where you can be a neon street rat that kind of stuff. Like, for example, if you go to the Neon Street Rat, it mentions that you grew up on the mean streets of Neon. You gain access to special dialogue options and better rewards from some missions on Neon. Crime bounty by other factions is greatly increased. So that always comes to the positive and always comes to the negative, which I think is and, awesome. And that's, and that's like, again, that's traits in general. It's like you get an upgrade, but a negative at the same time. Again, I'm a, I'm a TF2 guy, so like, yeah, Imagine, like, and this is more for the TF2 people if they understand. Imagine you getting, like, using, like, another weapon. You get an upgrade on some stats to it, but negative. And honestly, that's how traits work in mm -hmm. RPGs in general. And I think yeah. nine times out of ten, everyone usually likes to put traits in because it's, it's, it builds, it makes your character more personal. And I yes. fucking love that. And that, speaking of which, that is exactly what impressed me the most about Starfield in this presentation that I did not get last year is that there really seems to be a spark of personality in starfield there's a lot of sense of there's a there's a good sense a good healthy sense of humor to it there's a good sense of honoring their past legacy from bethesda there's even an embrace of some of the the meme culture stuff that has popped up around their games like the adoring fan for example and i think that's cool because one of my one of the things that i was kind of eh about with fall uh, sorry with starfield last year is that it looked kind of just drab and it just well, looked like they do, took it too serious too, and i don't think that love, anymore yeah the thing i love too is that um what is it is that not just the traits the backgrounds sound really good as well i yes. mean you're probably gonna be a diplomat probably oh yeah i i, I love speech in these in these kind of games that's the same yeah the same at least like yeah but perfect too personally i feel might may or may not be a positive is at least i feel like they're trying to to make the dialogue more fun and engaging actually once again is that oh if you if you're oh your background and your traits yes if it's if it's in part with the conversation almost like a dungeons and dragons type thing which should be good that always should be a positive mm -hmm. is that oh you're a diplomat oh maybe we could talk this out or trait make oh you're a chef like oh can you help me cook this thing that should be a given with what these rpgs especially yeah even if i more fun and engaging you know yeah even if i look at the list of dialogue options from one of these interactions that i'm looking at in the in the deep dive 
there's like five different dialogue options for for this one guy and one of them is the well, like a special trait that unlocks a different dialogue option where you can get twice the usual rate for a specific kind of job that you get and it's just it's like okay this is already a big improvement from not having a voiced protagonist cuz you it, al- it gives you a lot more freedom to have dialogue options with oh, yeah, multiple too, like, kinds oh, of people oh uh, it's like oh when you're like uh, i'm looking at it right now we're talking to this one dude at a at this really nice looking restaurant that's it's the like, one oh, you yeah. got the beast hunter trait i think yep. and it's like oh uh, you could talk to him and and he'll pay you double. And I'm like, hey, that's a pretty good one. You know? Yeah, that's cool. And then also one of the things I, I noticed when I went back and I watched the old footage that they showed off last year, and you can definitely see it in screenshot comparisons, is that they seem to have really dramatically improved the look of the environments. If you go back and they show the the western Especially, town, yeah. they show the western town in very briefly now, yeah, in the old good. trailer now from last good. year. And if you look at it now, holy shit, what a difference! Especially that year New Atlanta, made. New Atlantis, the kind of tower model was like, yeah, looks okay. But now look at it now, it's like, oh, they they fixed the lighting of yeah, it. The much the textures look good. Yeah, you know, like it's like for once, and like um, excluding like fall stuff, like New Diamond, I did like New Diamond City. Uh, I think it's just called Diamond City. I'm sorry, but yeah, all the other areas, I'm like, oh, I actually might be fun to go around it. I think um, New New Atlantis and Neon are probably going to be my favorite spots to like Neon interact and cool. explore. Yeah. yeah, it's like, and I'll admit, yeah, I know they said like, what is it, NASA, NASA or Space Punk, which I'm like, eh, I'm still kind of iffy on. I don't really get that tone except for Neon, but Neon is more almost like some more cyberpunk than um nasa punk personally yeah. but but either way it's like that's that's awesome i, I like, like that. that western town that, that that and the and the neon the cyberpunk that, yeah i'll world. give i'll give the western town to, looks I'll, really cool once again yeah i'll give credit to bethesda if they're trying to like secretly add like oh put a little western or cyberpunk feel to it i'll give kudos that's that uh, it's cool and they look especially when you're sitting, with yeah. people they all look packed with people and i like yeah. it doesn't just feel they, these cities just don't feel barren there's a lot of npcs walking around in them the one thing i like too is um um and this just like hopefully it's not just a one quest thing but man it, especially in neon if you can actually get a side gig as a basically like a drug dealer making drugs oh, that would be and awesome. it to, yeah it's like that would be awesome you'd be like, an enforcer um, and all that that would be fucking yeah. cool man heck, heck i wouldn't mind if it was something like remember fable 2 where you could just basically be like a, a blacksmith and they could spend hours on hours just like meshing and making well the same sword and honestly i got addicted to that i love doing that but man if you could do that like as a drug dealer just shipping out drugs doing a man again i know it sounds boring but you having the option to do it just sounds interesting that sounds like, like a lot of fun it's an rp rpg thing yeah yeah it's like oh you don't have to do it but some guy out there on earth you know on the planet who is a bethesda fan they might like it so yeah you got so many if you get so many options and it works then hey fuck it it's good yeah the other thing <laughs> i think i think one of the big improvements that i saw compared to last time is that the combat, especially the gunplay, looks better now than it yeah, did last year. Last I, last yeah. year, it just looked like oh no, where it just didn't really have any oomph. It just looked so just weak, and it looked like you were shooting like BB guns. It just it just looked terrible. And then this time, it's still I I think it'll still have that Bethesda jank to it, but especially the it, it looks yeah, better. The, um... Yeah, personally for me, go ahead. I was gonna say they're definitely going to take a Fallout approach to how combat is, aka we're gonna make the gun combat fun. Melee combat might be serviceable at yeah. best, and and the, and I like I'll admit though too, is that the the um I don't feel the ship combat personally is gonna be fun. Hmm. Uh, but like on one hand, at least you can try to board people, and then you yes, can, oh, you can do I gun love combat. That. So that's gonna be fun, and I'm Space happy with pirate, that too. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the cool thing too is that I know id software helped with the gameplay on the the shooting and the, yeah, the gunplay. Thank God, Bethesda, Bethesda like, okay. has like 
yeah, thank God Bethesda, like, you know, uh, they work under Bethesda, so then they can do that. Yeah, and I think the thing, too, is that I... Uh, combat has never been Bethesda's strong suit. And I said this last time as well. Combat has never been Bethesda's strong suit because it, the combat in... As much as I love Oblivion, as much as I love Skyrim, the combat is serviceable. It's not great, yeah. but it's serviceable. Fallout, Fallout's gunplay is kind of shit but it has the vat system that it can lean on and the vat system is a lot of fun because exactly. i'm a sociopath yeah, exactly. and i love watching people explode into a bloody mess but here they don't have those things to rely on so they have to really do a good job of making especially the too fun. yeah reminder of course reminder this is a new ip yes and i feel they're they are trying to like um you know do as best they can you know mm -hmm. with this yeah it's i hope they stick the landing with that as far as the yeah. gunplay because that's that's even i'm not i'm under no illusions i know you probably won't be able to get through this entire game just talking your way out of situations they're gonna have to force combat in at some point i just hope it's good i hope it just isn't insufferable and i hope that however crazy it gets at least for the the console people and especially for pc i hope the frame rate and performance is not buckle under the weight of the explosive action that it might happen in specific situations because that's that's what it was like in fallout 76 where whenever you would shoot whenever you would fire a shot it was like the frame rate would just fucking dip and i would i i'm going to hate that and i don't think any xbox fan that like sucking on that that microsoft dick is gonna be able to justify that when the performance dips literally every time you pull the trigger on a gun that cannot happen with star exactly Trek. it's it's gonna like especially to on the um i feel i'm gonna feel bad at the higher end pc users too because like if the frame rate can't handle like basic more, combat course, <laughs> i know then yeah and also Ugh. too like we i'm not gonna be surprised too if if Bethesda puts out like a 45 or so gigabyte day one patch, yeah, uh, like they, they will fall at 76. Yeah. It, well, they, they keep saying over and over again that this is the most, po even right now at this, this stage of the game, this is the most polished Bethesda game ever made. It has the least amount of bugs. People are constantly playing it at Microsoft, giving feedback, doing tweaks. Uh, Starfield has Microsoft's direct hand in the development of this in the performance yeah, and the optimization yeah, in the cookie jar the cookie. they cannot go back if if it's fucked up at launch as far as the performance the optimization and the bugs they cannot go back and say oh well we had a very hands-off approach with starfield we we can't you know phil spencer can't go back on kind of funny and go uh yeah it'll, we, we should have been more hands-on with starfield no the, they they uh, cannot rely on that again yeah, they can't because guys like Bill, like you, you already said that with fucking Redfall. Yeah, you're 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 past the yeah. point of like bullshitting us. Phil, get the controller out of your hand. Stop playing Thirty Three Immortals. Get back over to Bethesda and, and tell them, hey, you can't you can't launch it like this. Even if they it's have like, to delay it, I would be okay if they delayed it out of that September six release date. That's fine. Yeah. I, I don't give a yeah, shit. Yeah, it was. It was a better it's game. like yeah. I know they did the whole like oh we would have released it by now, but I'm like. Yeah, but Beth Bethesda, it's like for for I don't know. I just feel that's a lie. If they said, "Oh, we would release it by now," I never believed them when they gave that eleven eleven twenty two release date. The moment yeah. I saw that back in twenty twenty one, they I laughed the and I went. They no. would have. Imagine I think that was they would said, "Oh, that's what we would have released it." Then I'm like, ah, I don't believe you guys. No, you would have delayed. You would have delayed it because you know, you know that X, you got that Xbox like power behind you. Would, if you want to delay yeah. it, then delay it. Yeah, it would be smart if if it meant a better game. No one is in the end is going to give a shit that you moved it yeah. out of the cool sounding eleven 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 a uh, uh, twenty 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 two release date. It's not yeah, gonna like, fucking matter. Uh, like it's yeah. Don't get me wrong. It is cool, but fuck it. I would rather get a game that goes at a decent release time frame than whatever the fuck you turn to do with that. Yeah. Um. But it's it's thankfully we don't have to wait too long unless something goes catastrophically bad between now and September, and it's gonna be day one on Game Pass. So I'm I'm absolutely gonna be checking it out. I'm 
absolutely looking forward to it now because it does look cool despite my misgivings about some of the elements that I'm seeing in it. Uh, outside of just the issues that I mentioned, it's still, <laughs> the NPCs still have that dead-eyed Bethesda look to them. Um, yeah, they still it, got like the, the fish eyes. Craft. Yeah, they're ca- at least like it's still weird. It's like everything looks fine, but their character models still like they belong in fucking 2010 or 11. Yeah. There's a part of me that hopes that when we talk to an NPC, it does the whole pauses the action around the character and zooms in onto their face, like uh, you get with Plot like Three eight. and Oblivion. I, I would hope I hope they do that just because I I loved that. I think that's that's funny. I know, like I know, like it's it's um. I know people would say, oh, but like, what about the stuff that you could do, like in Fallout Four, where you could pause it, whatever. It's like, well, nine times out of ten, you're you're literally just gonna still stand around and talk to them face to face. Yeah. And like, um, the only thing I could I could like I I gave a positive on was that characters could interrupt you, but that was more of a story thing. NPCs yeah. aren't smart enough that they're gonna fucking interrupt your conversation like come on guys i remember when that was a big deal when they announced in skyrim that they were no longer doing that that bethesda stop and zoom character interaction that that characters would actually have actions when you were talking to them i remember when that was a big deal that that was a thing that they were gonna start doing in skyrim and i was so excited at the time when skyrim got announced and they they said that they were gonna do that and now I'm just like, eh, go back to the old way. The old way was a lot funnier. Same too, and and I got excited about that as well. Like I said, you can you can play, you could have the conversation first person, third person, and you don't have to stand still to talk. And and again, well, if it was now, story characters and PCs can interrupt your conversations and whatnot. I was like, that sounds cool, but now it's like, eh, I just like it simple. Yeah. Now, I'll say this too, if if. Starfield ends up living up to the promise that I see in it. I'm going to be a lot more interested in Elder Scrolls Six now because at this point, yeah. I don't, I don't really give a shit about Elder Scrolls Six. I love Elder Scrolls, but that game is so far away at this point that I'm like, okay, whatever. But if Starfield comes out and Bethesda can prove to me that they've still got the chops that I saw back in Oblivion and Fallout Three and Skyrim, I am going to be, I'm going to be happy as a pig in shit. Cause that's like that's like that's like a, a a friend from my high school years that has that had a little bit of a problem when they grew into adulthood, they, but they've gotten some help now and they're back and they're cool what, again. What was that? <laughs> well, no, I'm just I'm just making the comparison. Like this is an old oh, friend. This is an old oh, friend that I fell out of favor with, and if they come back, they've they've gotten some rehab. They've kicked that that drug addiction that was the original creation engine. Uh, they've gotten some extra cash through Microsoft. They come back, they're they're good again. Then I'll be a lot more excited about their future. Yeah, I'll be. I I, I said before, I will be shocked if I would if I have more enjoyment out of this game than like say Avowed because like that you would know, be crazy. Obsidian, Obsidian, Bethesda have a su- kind of pseudo sort of um rivalry amongst each other sort in of. terms of their yeah. R- RPGs. Even though yes, they do work under Xbox together. Now they yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. It's like, man, I would be like speechless. Yeah, you know, and I, and I feel, I would feel, yeah. I feel kind, of, I would feel bad for Obsidian, honestly. <laughs> yeah, and I also don't think that, I don't think, Star, because I've seen a lot of hyperbole around Starfield that people are like, oh my god, this looks like a, a an all time great game. This looks insane. This looks like the game to end all games. And I'm, I'm like, whoa, 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 hold on. Guys, hold let's, on. let's, it's not let's like the ultimate calm next down. gen title. Yeah. Yeah. This is not an ultimate next gen title. If, if I was right and I, and it, what, whichever, I was like, look, it's, I would say it's a really good, if not great RPG, which I, I do hope it is like a great new, a great RPG IP, mm-hmm. you know, from Bethesda. You know, yeah. They went back to their roots because they realized that what they were doing wasn't working. They went back to pseudo square one, looked up at like Morrowind and um Oblivion and yep. um uh you know their other old stuff. They modernized it but still made it like somewhat pseudo hardcore RPG. Yep. And it was like, all right, let's do this. Take some inspiration from your past, come back stronger than ever. Uh yeah, I, I am I am hopeful that Starfield will be very good. I'm not I don't think I expect it to be 
amazing or one of my all time favorite Bethesda games, but I don't know. Stranger things have happened. A fucking a fucking Titanfall game is in my top ten games of all time. So any anything can fucking happen. So that's uh that was Starfield Direct, which I thought was an excellent presentation as far as yeah, editing. Surprisingly pacing. Yeah. yeah, even the showcase. I thought it dips here and there, but as far as pacing, I thought it was really good. And yeah, man, this was uh Sunday was a good day for for us. Yeah. That was that was good. I I very much enjoyed what I saw watching the Starfield Direct and the showcase. Really really good showcase. Really great Starfield Direct. One of the best single game like I said presentations I've ever seen. And like I said at the end of the the live stream on Sunday, the highest compliment that I can give this showcase is that if they did not offer Game Pass on PC, this is the kind, and they didn't offer their games on PC in general, this showcase would have convinced me to buy an Xbox Series X. Because yeah. their their future right now, it, it looked it looked pretty bad at the beginning of the year with like Redfall being a, a fucking joke and Phil Spencer looking all like sad Phil. Um, <laughs> Now their future, man, it's looking pretty fucking bright, and PlayStation <laughs> looking kind of uh, there's some dark clouds on the horizon over there. But as far as Xbox, uh, yeah, here comes the sun, man. We finally made it. We've gotten through the dark years of the Xbox One, and uh, here we are. There's some light now, and at the end of this tunnel. And hopefully these games will be good. Hopefully it's it's and all this is going to be meaningless if the games end up sucking. But I really seriously doubt things and, yeah, like Avowed or Hellblade we, Two. We already, up sucking. I think we already discussed before. But like I said, I feel the the big at least like um if we're going next year, the biggest hits at least I think for me Razor is like Avowed and Hellblade Two. Yes, and definitely. like we like we said before, if somehow the 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 sirens or the gods sometimes allow it somehow and why but if avowed and hellblade 2 suck yeah that's gonna be like really bad on xbox's image yeah because they hyped the shit out of these two games oh, yeah. especially well hellblade 2 in particular I mean, was announced alongside the announcement of the xbox series x and that was back in 2019 <laughs> so they've been they've been building to hellblade 2 for almost four years now it better be fucking good and considering it's ninja theory I'm sure it will be. I'm sure it will be very good. I'm sure Avowed will be very good because Obsidian's a good studio. Hell, I, I'm sure. I'm sure like Clockwork Revolution will be awesome whenever that comes out. I hope so too. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's like and and all all like and I if I'd say to NXL, please take your time because like this yeah. is like I think like you're one of your first. I mean, they have done action RPGs before. If you ever played the Bard's Tale, I got it on Blockbuster. Really cool RPG mm. game they made. But um, yeah, I feel like this is one of their first. I guess almost like it's almost experimental. I would almost say because they never done like an Kinda, RPG yeah. like this before. Yeah. So yeah, again, all kudos to them, and I hope they are able to get it. Yeah, and uh, so if if we were to do a letter grade for this showcase, not not including Starfield, what would you give it the the showcase? Oh, um, I would give it a solid B minus. Hmm. See, I will go. I will give it a B. Give it a solid B, and that's that's more than I thought it would be. Yeah. If it was, yeah. It, personally, if it was with, if we both said like with the the uh, the Starfield direct, I give oh, it a B, B plus. plus. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then if if they just didn't have the damn Bethesda, like the ESO and the fucking Fallout seventy six, it's like, and and some of the indie games just were kind of eh in there. Yeah. It would be higher, but. And and if Hellblade two and I think if Hellblade two and Fable had come out with more impressive showings, I the think it would have been a B plus. Yeah, with with actual raw gameplay, I think it would have gone. Yeah, up to if a B+, they if they but... changed a few things, I would have. And and if like the Starfield Direct was like oh, the Starfield Direct, I'll leave alone. Was, that was, was great to me. Was that was, was great. great, perfect, perfect, whatever. But yeah, if they changed a little bit of the showcase, I would have given it like a solid A minus. Or maybe. yeah, same here. If they had shown gameplay. For Fable, if they had shown gameplay for actual like combat gameplay for Val or sorry for Hellblade Two, and then if they had cut out ESO, they cut out um 
the the Fallout seventy six. I don't know why they didn't just didn't put those th- two things in the extended showcase, but there you go. With the, with those things, it, those changes, it, that showcase would have been a it would have been an all time absolutely amazing showcase. Just regardless of the console, it would be uh-huh. an all time great showcase. But as it stands, very good, easily their best showcase in many years. Easily their best one they've done this whole Xbox Series X and S generation. Easily. Mm-hmm. And I, I hope this is not just a fluke. I hope they I hope they come back again in this next summer and they, they deliver even more than they did here. Because there's still some things that we we didn't see that they have in the works. Like Everwild. They have the Kojima game. They have Stay K3. They have um Perfect Dark. So there's a there's still a lot in the chamber that Xbox has not shown yet. But and then whatever the fuck Double Fine is working on, I, I'm sure whatever they're working on might be ready to show by next year. So Yeah. Yeah, that was the Xbox game showcase for 2023, and it was really fucking good. Really fucking good. I gotta give Phil Spencer credit for, for this. This is like the one time that he's like promise, 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 and I, I believe it. Like I'm, I'm confident in the future of Xbox yeah, I, right now. I partially, I said before, I partially like believe with these games, but at the same time, it's all about like let's hope that these games actually come out yes. in 2024. Is yeah. what I'm saying. They gotta deliver. Which I, 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 there's really no doubt in my mind that most of them will. I have some concerns about a few of them, but. The big ones to me, like Avowed and Hellblade 2, Clockwork Revolution, I think those, even Fable, even though I wasn't like really crazy about the trailer, I think it will be a good game. And South of Midnight, I, I, that looks very promising. I, I hope that is good. I'm not really confident in Compulsion, but I just for the sake of that concept, realizing its potential, I hope it's a good game. Yeah, uh, before we head out, do you have any closing thoughts, man? Oh, uh- all I say is like, um, you know, hope the developers are okay working at Xbox. Hope they're not being crunched. The usual stuff. Yeah. Um, this was really good. Um, was surprised. Hopefully, again, everything works out next next year. Whichever. We still got plenty of games to um, try out this year. So mm-hmm. hopefully, next year will <laughs> um, be better than what we got at twenty twenty three. Yeah. I, I was actually hoping, like, I was hoping to God that Avowed or Hellblade weren't going to get 2023 release dates. I was going to be like, oh, shit. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, because I'm like, look, <laughs> I love Obsidian. I still love Obsidian, but I'm like, guys, don't rush this, please. Yeah. You don't. It's like, yeah, like, literally, Xbox, um, Xbox. Well, yeah, it, it always still, like, baffles me between, like, Obsidian, Arcane, and Bethesda that Arcane like well granted even the people at arcane they were like yeah no we don't like this game <laughs> we don't yeah. like this game why Please are we still releasing it, it? that's yeah. that that's what they said that's what yeah, they that's said and i bad. feel so i feel so bad for them but yeah, yeah i'm glad i and honestly too a lot of them just got out of arcane so now they're probably gonna make their own studios yeah. and Damn. stuff Damn, uh, what a shame shame so i i have two brief exit questions for you okay so for the 2024 games that got announced. What do you think will come first? Towerborn, Avowed, Hellblade 2, or Microsoft Flight Simulator? Um, I think Flight Simulator will come yeah. out first. I agree, yeah. It just because, like, it's very, me, a very, very important game for Microsoft Xbox. Yeah. And then the next, I think I know the answer to this, but I'm, a- I'm going to ask it anyway. Outside of Starfield, what would you say was your game of the show? Oh, um, Clockwork Revolution. Yep, I agree. <laughs> you know, it's just, I was just like, yeah, I was genuinely surprised. I knew it was coming, but I did not think they would do like the best for. If that was the best for last that Phil did, I'm like, Phil, I love you. Thank you for doing that. Either way, I'm I'm happy it showed up. Yeah, man, I feel like that should have been their their one last thing, and then yeah. it cuts out of the showcase and goes into the Starfield Direct. That would have been a banger of an ending, but yeah, as it is, exactly. Starfield Direct was. I'm, I'm surprised Phil just didn't. Yeah, Phil didn't do a cyberpunk move. That was a perfect end thing for his 
thing to show off. Hey, we got Cyberpunk, not fucking yeah. PlayStation or whatever. Yeah, I can just imagine him and his. Uh, I do my Phil Spencer voice, where he's like, "I'm excited to announce a brand new IP from the from the talented folks at In Exile Entertainment. Take a look at this brand new franchise coming or, exclusively or, or like, to yeah. Xbox to Xbox consoles and PC." He he has that like specific okay. voice that I think that cadence that I think is funny, especially but, too. Yeah. Like again, the the cyberpunk one was perfect. Where he's like, that was cool, and have a great. <laughs> he's yep. like, what the fuck? Does the glitching? Like, yeah. yeah, that was cool. Yeah. I I like I, I, that. Yeah. That's where I was hoping for. Um, when he did the oh one last thing, you yeah. know, I was like ah, shoot, yeah. that was still great. That was still a great um e three presentation back then. Oh. I love that one. Yeah, that that was one of Xbox's stronger showcases. The one where they ended with Cyberpunk. I think that was yeah. twenty. I think that was twenty eighteen. Yeah, I have to go back and check uh, that one out to yeah, see if it was better. Twenty eighteen or twenty nineteen. That's still crazy. That like they showed it off, and we still had to wait like another year or so for the game to come out. No, twenty twenty nineteen was the one where they revealed Keanu Reeves as Johnny Silverhand. Yeah, I, I remember that very specifically because I was in my living room. And I was watching it with a couple friends and a Keanu Reeves came out and my friend's girlfriend like lifted her head like, what the fuck? When she saw him. I know. I was surprised. I was like, Keanu fucking Reeves. Yeah. So yeah. Thank you as always for joining me, man. This is a fun discussion. It's a lot more yeah. fun than the last one. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Uh, thank you all for watching. And that's going to be it for the, the summer showcase stuff for this year. And uh, Xbox, as far as I'm concerned, Xbox saved the summer, man. They they put the they put this summer of showcases on their back and carried it the entire fucking way. And they did a really damn good job. And I hope they keep up this momentum for next year. So yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Clay, as always, for joining me. And uh, yeah, catch y'all later. See ya. Bye.